Five minutes. Five minutes. If we should just ask for five minutes. Oh. <coughs> okay, we'll go live in five. Live in five. I thought we were about to go live, but that just changed. Changed. So the goal for us now is not run up against. Hello and good evening. Welcome inside Havelina Stadium, the site of Pepsi Field here in Kingsville, Texas, on the campus of Texas A&M University in Kingsville, where this evening the Havelina Sports Network and KTAI 91.1 present Texas A&M Kingsville Havelina's football. And this evening the Hawks are playing host to a conference rival as well as the number 12 team in the nation, the MSU Texas Mustangs. Alongside Nate Cortiso, I'm Mark and Sarah. We appreciate you tuning in for another night of Havelina football. And Nate, the Havelina has come into this matchup at two and four on the season. They're still looking for their first win in the Lone Star Conference. They're 0 and three in the LSC to this point, but a tall task facing the Hogs tonight in a really good Midwestern State team. Yeah, Midwestern State uh, coming into this game, as you mentioned, number 12 in the latest AFCA Top 25 poll in Division Two. They've won three of their four first four. Uh, conference games uh, in the LSC and boasts one of the most prolific offenses, not just in this conference, but as well as the entire country. And you have a Western State team that you mentioned is they have their four and one, three and one in conference. They're coming off of their one loss, which was at home last week to Kama. So this is a team that's coming in here that's going to be angry. That was a tough loss last week. They lost on a missed field goal at the gun that sent them down to a one point defeat. They're going to be co coming here motivated. And the Hellions are probably going to have to deal with a football team that really wants to come in here and make a statement tonight. And considering that last week's home game was only a home game for half of it, uh, the game uh, was uh, postponed at the half uh, at in Wichita Falls and postponed to that next sat Sunday afternoon where they played the second half of the game at Apogee Stadium in Denton, Texas on the campus of the University of North Texas. And as you mentioned, a 20-19 to 19 loss. They missed a field goal at the very end of the game that resulted in their first loss of the season. That is certainly going to be on the Mustangs' minds coming into tonight. It had to be one of the strangest scenarios any of us have ever seen for a college football game. It was tied at 10 at the half, and then a storm blew in. There was a lot of lightning around the, the area where the game was being played. 
it get pu got pushed back a bunch. Then at one point, MSU Texas announced that the game was declared a no contest. They just weren't going to finish it, and it was going to stay a ten. It was going to stay a ten to ten, and just basically not be counted in the standings. And then an update came about an hour later saying, "Okay, no, it's back on. We're going to finish it tomorrow." A tough situation for any team to deal with, and one that was certainly far from ideal, I'd imagine, from Midwestern State's perspective. But they have a what's the slate clean tonight? They have a Havilah a football team that is mentioned trying to get off the Schneid in conference play. I think, and Nate, you can tell me if you agree or disagree with this. There are two main factors in this game that the Havilahs need to make happen. They're going to find a win. One, it's pretty obvious the Havilah defense needs to find a way to slow down MSU Texas's offense, and the second one is. The Tamuk offense needs to get off to a fast start in this game. Midwestern State's offense ranks fifth in the country in total yards. They're averaging better than 520 yards per game this season. Through the air, Leighton Rabb is out, and the offense are throwing for a better than 330 yards per game. Now, they're going up against the nation's number 11 pass defense. The Hogs on defense this season average allowing just 143 yards per game through the air. But, and they haven't allowed an opponent to reach 200 yards passing since week one against Commerce, but the Hawks haven't faced an offense like this thus far this season. Quarterback Leighton Rav, who was a Harlan Hill Award nominee last year, has emerged as, in all likelihood, the front runner for that award this season. And he has a cadre of weapons at his disposal. Tamuk's defense needs to have the beginning. They can't afford to take even a series off, or they will get burned by this offense. And it almost doesn't matter how the Havlin offense does today because if Tamuk's defense can't slow down Rab and company then the Hans will never be able to keep up with them and that's not a shot at Coy Detmer Jr. and this offense it's simply this the MSU offense is so good there might not be any team in the nation that can keep up with them when they're hitting on all cylinders offensive the Hans are not at the top of their game on defense this could be a long night for them and you mentioned the, the, the starting fast with Texas A&M Kingsville and it appeared that they were doing that last week against Western Oregon uh, against the Wolves first play from scrimmage Long pass from Coy Detmer Jr. to Tyler Wilson. Went for 48 yards. At the end of the play, Tyler Wilson was stripped of the football, recovered by the Wolves, but then took it back to the Javelina side of the field and they uh, ended up scoring the first three points of that game. So, you know, I think that's just a crazy occurrence, I think, where you're not expecting, you're not expecting to turn the ball over when you are, you know, doing as well as they appeared to do on their first play from scrimmage. And so I think... Coach Darren Wilkinson, in addition to last week, you know, looking deep and looking to exploit uh, the uh, the Wolves defense as he did uh, last week, and against his Mustangs defense, that's a little bit not as susceptible to to the uh, to pass to a good pass defense. Being aggressive is going to be important for them in the early on uh, tonight. Yeah, starting fast has not really been a problem for this team this season. They were up 13 nothing at halftime against Commerce. They started well against Texas Wesleyan. They scored a touchdown, I think it was 21 seconds in, against Angelo State. So getting points on the board early, controlling the early action, has not been something that they've struggled with. But obviously tonight against an offense this good, it's something that has to be a top priority. And the way I'm thinking going into this game, I've always been a proponent of, hey, you win the toss, defer. Take the ball in the second half. You want that chance for back-to-back -back possessions. But I think tonight, if the Hogs win the toss, I would take the football. I think having two of those first three possessions will be a, could be a big key for this team trying to start fast and get points on the board quickly against this team. We're going to take our first break here on the Havlina pregame show. We'll be back in 90 seconds, and we'll have the kickoff Coming up, when we return, you're listening to Tamuk Football on the Havilena Sports Network and KTAI 91.1.
The Havilena Marching Band just finishing up the national anthem, as I'm sure you heard, here at Pepsi Field at Havilena Stadium. The Havilenas are on their sideline, while well, Midwestern State is making their way to the sideline on the near side as the sun just fading and falling down in the South Texas sky as we close in on 7 o'clock. Thank you again for tuning in to the Havilena Sports Network and KTAI 91.1 for our coverage of Havilena football this evening. The Hogs in their full-length blue uniforms, blue uniform tops with blue pants, gold numbers with white piping on the front and the back of the uniform tops and across the chest on the front side it says Havilena's in gold also with a white stroke on their pants. Pretty simple, just plain blue pants, no stripes or any piping, no lining helmets, as you would expect. White helmets with a blue stripe down the center flanked by a pair of gold stripes. Havilena's written in script in blue on both sides of the helmet, surrounded by gold. Midwestern State in their road white uniforms with white uniform tops, maroon numbers with gold piping and also gold on the outside of the shoulders on both sides. On the front, again, maroon numbers with Midwestern State in that same color. Just above the numbers, gold helmets with that sort of dark burgundy on both sides, spelling out MSU. And plain white pants for the visitors as well. Coin toss taking place now, right where you'd expect it at midfield. And Havilinas win the toss. And they do defer. This is the Hogs going with the old tried and true method of shooting for the possibility for double possessions or just trying to have the opportunity to take the ball and maybe change the momentum once we get out of halftime. But that means Leighton Rab and company will be on the field to start this game off. And they, the, the resume that this young fella, Leighton Rab, a senior from Alano, Texas, has put together pretty darn impressive. Fourth in the nation in passing yards with just under 2,000 and just over 1,900 yards at 1,909 yards through the air. As we mentioned, fifth in the country with 18 touchdown passes, just the one interception. You know, this guy is one of the best we have at the Division II level. And that one interception came last week, wrapped enough through a touchdown last week, which means for his first 18 touchdown passes, which occurred in – the Mustangs' first five games, he didn't throw a single pick. And obviously last week against Commerce, the Lions broke that streak. But Rab, looking to start another one tonight. He will begin with the football. As the number 12 team in the nation will look for their sixth win of the season. The Havilland is trying to get to three wins. They entered today, as we mentioned before, at 2-4. and four. They're 0-3 in the LSC. And Julio De La Garza will be kicking it off for Tamuk to begin this game. Jawan Johnson and Bryce Martinez have been the main return men. Johnson averaging better than 20 yards per return. And MSU also sending back junior receiver Tyreek Edwards. Johnson on the far side. Midwestern State will be going from right to left for those of you tuning in on the radio. And De La Garza approaches the ball and blasts it deep. And watching it sail into the end zone is Jawan Johnson. Rab and company will begin this drive at their own 25. Rab, I mentioned a senior, 6'5", 225, has completed nearly 60% of his passes this season for 1,909 yards, 18 touchdowns, one interception. Also has a couple of rushing touchdowns this season. And Rab begins with Adrian Seals behind him. And three receivers to the left side. Xavier Land is the wide man. Pistol formation for Rab with Seals behind him. You'll see a lot of Vincent Johnson running the football as well for MSU today. 
Ball spotted on the far hash on the right side. Rab, hand up the seals, running right, gets wrapped up in the backfield. Jacob Clarkson got in there from the back side and took him down. Tyreek Edwards and Juwan Johnson joining Xavier Landis, the starting receivers on the line for MSU Texas. Caleb Brown and Austin Davis are the tackles. DeAndre Despane and Kevin Fisher Jr. are the guards with A.J. Roll in the center. Second down and nine. Shotgun again, trips left. Right over the play fake, looking over the middle, throwing one deep. On the left side, incomplete. He overthrew Juwan Johnson, who was contending that he was being held by Devontae Williams, but there was no flag. For the Javelinas, Vaughn Taylor starting in the middle. And now Taylor goes out with Brandon Jones and Jacob Clarkson, the defensive ends. Jamar Davis now is in defensive tackle. A linebacker are Tremichael Tutt and Jalen Harris and Jordan Seminot. Devontae Williams, uh, I should say Peyton Hendricks, Nick Stiff, and Brajon Crenshaw are the defensive backs. Aaron Jackson, I believe, is in now in corner on the far side. Rapid to throw. Here comes a blitz. Deep in the middle for Johnson. Overthrew him. Johnson had a couple steps on Jordan Seven, and he might have been off to the races if that pass had been on target. But the Havlin defense with a huge three and out to begin this game. Not a surprise uh, for Rab to go after uh, Jawan Johnson on the last two plays, a leading receiver for MSU Texas coming into tonight. Johnson is the go-to guy for Rab. He comes into this game 12th in the country in receptions and 7th in yards. Sean Landes back to receive this punt. Donovan Moore was the main return man last year. And Dylan Spears will, Spears will boot it deep. Gets off a low short kick that's going to bounce at about the Tumuk 44. Rolling past the 40 and out of bounds at the Havelina 38. So if you're going to draw up a script to start this game, if you're Darren Wilkinson, be pretty close to that. Defense gets a three and out. Offense gets the ball with decent field position. And the Hogs now with an opportunity to try and seize the early momentum. And Coy Detmer Jr. with a big old wrap. On his non-throwing arm, his left arm, comes out to lead this offense. The junior quarterback from Somerset, Texas, starts with Jeff Carr behind him. Single back. Two tight ends are Brent Hertel and Torrey Thomas. Now Connor Perkins goes in motion. A fake to him and gives a car left side into a crowd of bodies. And no gain there. Perkins and Alan Smith, the two receivers, to start, for, start out for Tamuk. Joseph Partita at center. Kyle Quino and... Narciso okay, Romaldo, or check that, Kyle, Jorge Rios are the guards to begin this possession. And now the Hogs should be having some trouble getting the call in. Partita's conferring with the MSU defense as if MSU was saying, hey, hurry up. And Grimaldo and Justin Jackson with starting tackles. Pass in the flat for Nick Pellerin. Cuts the field to the 43. Seen to the 45. He's close to a first down. I think we'll see a lot of that tonight. Nate. This MSU defense leads the conference in sacks against a Tumuk offense that's given up the most sacks in the conference. I think that short passing game will come in handy to try and offset that rush this evening. It, it will be about third down and maybe half a yard. Nick Peller in the single back, and they do actually change it. Now it is a first down at the 48. 13-20 to go. First quarter, no score. Detmer sending out Torrey Thomas wide to the right. A single receiver wide left. Offset eye. Detmer to throw. Has time. Deep ball on the left side for Allen Smith. One-handed catch at the 20. And he's hauled down by Khalil Finley. 28 yards on that completion. Smith's fourth reception of the season. And Tamuk is in the red zone. DJ Doggett and Alex DiValerio are the defensive ends for Midwestern State with Aquan Randolph and Zach Edwards, the tackles. Paul Manis, Troy Burnett, and Tristan Shearman are the linebackers. Burnett is the inside man. Jaden Cunningham and Demarcus Wilson are the corners. And Cervell Ford and Josh Weidermeyer, two all-conference performers from a year ago, are the safeties. The movement in the pre-snap formation for Tamuk. Shotgun, Detmer on first and ten. High snap, but he gets it down, hands it to Pellerin. Right into the line is slung down after a gain of about three. DJ Doggett on the spot for the tackle. Second and seven. Hevelin is looking for the first score of the ball game. You feel like that, that three and out 
that their defense force on the game's first possession might have given this team a shot in the arm early. Play clock winding down. It's down to 11 as Tamuk finally breaks the huddle with 12 minutes on the game clock here in the first quarter. Single back pl play clock at 3. At 2, Detmer hands up to Pellerin. Left side gets across the 15. Maybe gets an extra yard or two before he's brought down. Third down coming up. What I've, liked to, what I've liked so far from this Javelina offense is a lot of balance. Mid-range game, passing the ball to Nick Pellerin, the deep pass to Alan Smith. Carr has gotten a couple of carries. Uh, Pellerin is running up the left side. A lot of, you know, changing the formations, which is something they like to do, confusing this Mustang defense. Third down and four from the 13. That were with four receivers, Armstrong and Tyler Wilson are the are the receivers on the right side. Torrey Thomas, Allen Smith to the left. Shotgun from the left hash, Detmer to throw. Rush coming, throwing end zone over the head of Torrey Thomas. Detmer took a shot at the end of that play as Alex Di Valerio got in for the hit. You can see Detmer just wanted to get that pass away quickly, put a little too much on it. And that might have almost just been a throwaway with a guy in his face. And if you're ever going to bust out a fake field goal, I don't think this would be a bad time, Nate, but we'll see. This, as it is, will be a 30-yard attempt from the left hash. De La Garza is 4 of 8 this season. Low snap, it's bobbled. Rosini gets it down. A kick is blocked. Running away from the left side is Weidermeyer. Across midfield, he is gone. And there's a player down, I believe it's De La Garza at about the 20. Another bad snap from Justin Johnson. And the worst case scenario is taken back for a touchdown by Watermeyer. And Tamuk's kicker is down at the 30. Just a worst case scenario right there, Nate. Just something that you couldn't let happen if you wanted to win this football game. You know, this is something that is reminiscent of what happened last week against Western Oregon. You had the long play with Tyler Wilson, the fumble, and then the return back on the other side. Now we have a touchdown uh, return on a, off a blocked kick. An opportunity that should have been three points for the Javelinas is now going to turn into seven for Midwestern st uh, MSU Texas. And this has been the story of this team so many times. It's just missed opportunities or mistakes on special teams. I just put this squad behind the eight ball. It seems like week in and week out. And it all starts with, I don't mean to, to, be, to sound too harsh, but it all starts with Justin Johnson's snapping. Whereas then he got that ball down late, and De La Garza tried to kick it, but when you're in that situation, when you're A, kicking it late, and B, kicking it from just a standing position, you don't have the run up to the ball, the ball's not going to go anywhere. The best thing Rosalina could have done was just pick that ball up as the extra point try is up and good. The best thing Rosalina could have done was just pick the ball up and throw it away or just yell fire and just turn the ball over on downs. Once you try and still try and kick that ball, there are far more bad there's far more bad things that are gonna happen than good things. And so Tamuk, after a promising start to this game, a three and out on defense and a drive into scoring position on offense, find themselves down seven to nothing. So a nearly ideal start to this game for the Haas gets ruined by a special teams mistake and a touchdown for MSU. And this again, not to beat on this point, this MSU offense is so good at scoring on their own, you can't let the defense with special teams give them extra points. Extra points on, you know, especially, you know, scenarios where you're taking, you're getting a field goal attempt. You know, you're about to hopefully get a 30-yarder in by uh, Julio De La Garza. Now we're not sure what his injury status is after he was down on the field. He's still, as with all of his struggles this season, he's still a valuable part of this football team. And, you know, they're going to need him to make big kicks and big punts. Uh, and hopefully we'll see him back in action uh, later on tonight. Now, there are two more booters on the roster, sophomore Trent Sisco and freshman Karch Casper. So De La Garza is not the only guy on this team with, with a leg. But he, there's a reason he's been the kicker for this team almost from day one since he first set foot on campus. Jeff Carr and Aaron Jackson are back to receive this kick. Carr averaging 18 yards per return. Jackson 
this season has returned two kicks for 90 yards, including a 53-yarder against New Mexico Highlands a couple weeks ago. And Jerron Imbriani sends it short. It bounces the 20 right towards the Mustangs. The ball is loose. MSU says it's theirs. And it is Mustang football. It was a short kick, and it appeared that no one from the Javelina side put their hands up, and it looked like they were trying to cover space, but no one had the wherewithal to put the hands or at least get some hands on the football. Well, if you watch the replay, it looked like there was a Havilena player who almost put his arms up like he was going to catch it and then went to block. There were a, a few players around the area where the ball was falling, but none of them but none of them took the kick. They just let it bounce, and MSU was the, seemed to be the only one aware of where the football was. Rabin a shotgun, now starting from Tamuk's 30. Man in motion, that's Johnson. Hand up to him. We're under runner on the right side gets to about the 25 and squirts ahead to the 23 before Aaron Jackson and Tremichael Tut make the stop. It'll be second down. Three receivers and a bunch, kind of a bunch stack on the far side for MSU. Johnson in single coverage near side against Jordan Seminot, and that's a matchup to watch this season, this game. Rab throws it left for Johnson. Seminot looked like he got there a little bit early, but there was no flag, and the pass was incomplete. And Seminot and Johnson jawing back and forth will not be the only time you'll see that night. Seminot, a really vocal and emotional player who scored the only touchdown that the Javelinas got on the board last week with an interception to return for a score. Pistol formation for Rab with four receivers. Blitz being shown. I think he got the Hogs offside. He did. Throwing it right side, coming back, but not making the catch was Edwards, or check that, Johnson. But the offsides call will give MSU Texas a first down anyway, as it was third down and about three. Yeah, they get Tremichael Tut, but I think like there, were, there was more than one blue and gold jersey that was across the line of scrimmage. Rab and his shotgun, again four receivers, three men to the left side, including Johnson who's on the outside. Handoff right side goes Vincent Johnson through the line across the 15. And gets to about the 13, that's a six yard run. So it will be second and four. Johnson, the main running back on this team has 618 yards this season. That is 15th in Division II, second in the LSE also is tied atop the conference state touchdowns. Rab looking left, throwing for Johnson. He's got seven odd beat, touchdown, Mustangs. He made a quick move on Seminod, and as soon as he got open, I figured Rab would go in his direction. And, you know, he's just, you know, Johnson is showing once again why he is the top target on this MSU Texas football team. Yeah, Johnson is the number one receiver on this team for a reason. He showed it right there as he beat Seminod. Got to look at the replay. It looked like a slant and go route where Johnson got Seminot to bite to the inside, and that's exactly what it was. Johnson came in. Seminot, who's an aggressive corner, tried to jump it as the extra point is good. And then Johnson just headed for the pylon on the near side in the back of the end zone, and a perfect throw from Rab. And with 9.51 to go, the score is the Mustangs 14, and the Havilene is nothing. And this... This, is, this reminds me already of last year's game between these two teams. You look at the final score last year. You say, oh, Midwestern won 35-13. to 13. It was a blowout. It was a walkover. But you go into that game and you analyze that game. There were three or four plays that could have changed that game in Tamuk's favor. They had a fumble recovery by, by one of their linebackers, Peyton Tilly. He looked like he was going to run for a touchdown and tripped over his own 40-yard line. And the Hogs ended up having to drive. They drove all the way down to Midwestern State's five-yard line at a point in the fourth quarter where they were down by 15, had a fourth and one, where if they score a touchdown there, it's an eight-point game. It's a totally different game. They don't convert it. MSU goes down, they score a touchdown, and all of a sudden it becomes, instead of an eight-point game, it becomes a 22-point game. That just There were three or four plays that totally changed that game to the point where you walked out of there thinking, if these plays had gone differently, the Hogs might have won that game. 
And tonight, it, and on that night, it just seemed like there was so much bad luck that went against the Javelinas. Tonight already, you look at this and say, geez, just some, some funky things, some bad breaks for Tamuka put them in a spot where in a game that started out in what you thought would be the perfect manner for this team, they're down 14 nothing. We've barely played five minutes. Barely played five minutes, and there are three mistakes that they've already made that have put them behind two touchdowns with so much football to go. Imbriani with another short kick. Left side, Torrey Thomas catches it at the 21. Left side across the 25, gets to about the 29 before he is swarmed under by a bunch of Mustang players. I think he hesitated for a half second thinking that he thought he called a fair catch. And then when he realized that he didn't, that's when he, he started to go. That's what it looked like to me, too. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a hesitation there on Thomas's part. But as it is, Tamuk's offense will get the ball at their own 29 with Detmer leading the way. Three receivers to the near side with Ryan Martinez, the inside man. Dilworth and Wilson also to the near side. Jeff Carr, the heat back on the pistol. As they give it to Carr. Carr dives into the line and the gets a couple. Carr, the leading rusher on this team, coming in with 327 yards on the ground. Still averaging 5.7 yards per carry. Both Carr and Pellerin are averaging better than five yards per tote this season. But the Javelinas, as a team, only running up 124 yards per game through six contests. And this Tamuk offense functioning in a very methodical pace so far. Not No no huddle, not anxious to get out of the huddle. They want to make sure they have everyone on the same page out of match. Play fake, pass near side for Carr. Gets a block to the outside across the 40. Nice cut to get past one man. And is tripped up at the 43. This defense for the Mustangs, they rush the pass so well, but other than that, they're a pretty mediocre defense. They're eighth in the conference in total yards allowed, seventh in rush yards allowed, sixth in pass yards. The, this defense, you can move the ball on them, but obviously for the Hawks, it's going to be trying to convert their opportunities, especially in the red zone. That's the important thing. You know, if you give Coy Demer Jr. enough time to run or freelance as, as he sees fit, you know, despite the fact that they weren't able to get uh, points on the other end uh, down the field, you can still do what you do and succeed. Highs going from left to right. Connor Perkins goes in motion. Jet sweep hand up to Perkins. And flags are thrown. They get to move for a false start. False start. Kingsville number 55. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. They called 55. I think 55 is Omar Wilkins. Omar Wilkins is not playing tonight. It must have been 65 Justin Johnson. And... Parker Cundiff, I believe, was on the sideline. One of Tamuk's assistants, the uh, tight end and assistant special teams coach here. Not really pleased with that call. But it is now first and 15 from the 38. Denver, short pass left side for Torrey Thomas. Looking for a block. Gets across the 40 left sideline. Out around the 45. And the last looks like they're going to give him progress to the 46. So that's an eight-yard gain. Tamuk gets back the penalty yardage. For Thomas, that's 12 catches on the season. He really is their short pass go-to guy. 12 catches coming into tonight. 11 grabs for just 93 yards. But he's the guy that likes to try to get the ball to in space because he's a load to bring down at 6'4", 215. Tyler Wilson wide to the near side with Connor Perkins on the far side pistol formation. Four down lineman for Midwestern State. Handing off to Carr. Left side has a seam. Crosses midfield. Stays on his feet. Gets a first down. He's to the 43. That's an 11 yard run by Jeff Carr. And the Havlin offense establishing that they can move the ball on this defense. Also probably giving to Mook's defense some much needed time to rest and make adjustments on the sidelines. And obviously, Nate, we mentioned, Tamuk has two more kickers. They're not, the largest is their only one. But once you get in the red zone, depending on the situation, obviously, are you still willing to try field goals? As Pellerin takes a snap and the Wildcat right through the middle and knifes his way to the 39. That's, that is, will be a question the rest of this game. 
Will you even attempt field goals? Maybe if it's fourth and 15 from, you know, the 20. But if it's fourth and five from the 15, are you going to go for it? Or will you, are you willing to put this field goal team back out there again? I think if it's this particular scenario where they're down by two scores, perhaps you might go for it. And you get the sense the Javelinas, who normally function with a pretty good pace on offense, might be trying to shorten this football game. It's tough to keep to that plan once you're down 14 nothing. but Tamuk might be just trying to limit MSU to as few possessions as possible. Man in motion, hand up to Perkins on the sweep, cuts back towards the inside, is run down from behind at the 37. And Jalen Abdul Kareem with the tackle at the 37. So it will be third down and four. And I think this is four down territory for Wilkinson and company. And a very sizable Midwestern State contingent has traveled here tonight. There are a whole bunch of fans to our right occupying what is normally the visitor section of the stands here at Havilland Stadium. Ball on the near hash. Detmer in a pistol with Nick Pellerin behind him. Midwestern showing blitz. Here they come. Detmer steps up in the pocket, has time over the middle for Wilson. I think he's short of the first down, only a gain of about two yards. As in good coverage was Jaden Cunnigan, and he made the tackle. It is fourth down and two, though, and I'm almost positive the Ohio is going to keep the offense on the field. Five eighteen to go. We're in the first quarter. Fourteen nothing, Midwestern State. Pistol formation again. Four receivers for the Hogs. Four down linemen. Four. MSU Texas. Detmer to throw. Flag flies. Pass is complete for a first down, but I think they're going to get to move for a legal formation. We'll check. It was the line judge's call, and he immediately signals it's against the Javelinas. And now fourth and two becomes fourth and seven. And that was. Appear, uh, appears to be Tory Thomas and Aaron Dilworth who were on the far side. Or they just said too many men in the backfield, which just means some there were there was somebody who was supposed to be in the line of scrimmage who wasn't. And now fourth and seven from the four to the offense stays on the field. It's tough enough to convert these fourth downs once, Nate. We have to do it twice. It just becomes all oh, that much more difficult. That to throw. Here comes pressure. Throws it high over the middle for Alan Smith. Incomplete. Smith might have gotten hit early by Cervell Ford, but the pass falls to the turf, and Kingsville turns it over on downs. Smith had his man boxed out on the play, but Ford arrived just about at the same time the ball did, and that put the sophomore receiver in a tough position to try and make a catch. As Leighton Rab leads the offense back out onto the field. Grab pistol formation with four receivers. Read option keeper by Rab left side and he loses a couple. Sean Sim is one of the Havelinas in there to make the stop on Rab. Now they get Xavier Land for holding, and Tamuk accepts the penalty. I'm not sure. When, I'm not sure I would have accepted that. It would have been second and twelve. I'd rather take the down on the loss of yardage than the penalty and let them repeat first down. Obviously, it will be second down and long, and the umpire moves the ball ahead to the thirty. They made it. They were going to make it an eleven-yard penalty, so the umpire came in and corrected the mistake. 4.23 to go. We're in the first quarter. 14-0 Midwestern State. Tyreek Edwards goes in motion to the right side. Two receivers on other side for Rab, who sits back in the pocket. Throws it up right side for Edwards. Off his hands. Incomplete. Edwards was open. But Rab and him could not hook up. Second down of 20. So the decision to take that, decision to take that penalty did pay off for the Javelinas. 
take that penalty. And now MSU Texas faces a second and 20, and with this passing offense, they can certainly convert that 20 in a hurry. So you'd rather have a second and 20 than second and 12. The two safeties back very deep for, for Tamuk right now, three down linemen. Sean Landis showing blitz off the edge. He backs off, Rab. Rolling left being chased by Brandon Jones, throwing left side for Edwards, incomplete. Tried to make a sliding catch at the 47. But now it will be third down and 20. It's really encouraging to see Brandon Jones is, is coming off of the game last week where he had a sack, and the Javelinas as a whole had their best sack performance of the season with three. And, and Jones getting pressure on Rab is going to be huge tonight to at least keep the MSU Texas as down as you possibly can. Absolutely, with no Kayla Valentine tonight for the Hogs, the, the Brandon Jones responsibility is just increase multifold his need to get pressure on Rab. Third and 20. Rab, chest high snap, back to throw, looking deep down the middle, has an open man incomplete over the head of Quentin Childs, who was open. Rapp has seemed seemingly, with the exception of that one touchdown pass, it's been a little bit off tonight. Him and his receivers have just misconnecting in a number of big plays. Another one right there. That first possession for MSU Texas, he overthrew Johnson here on the, on the uh, far side of the field. And if you look at the numbers now, Rapp has only completed one pass for seven yards, or one out of seven uh, for 12 yards. Spears back to punt, averaging 35 yards per kick. And Sean Linus waiting for a line drive kick that bounces to the 45, moves left, almost runs into a Havelina player, and is touched by an MSU Texas player around the 40, which is where it should be spotted as it contacted Marcus Wilkerson. And they're actually, they actually are going to spot it, looks like at the 35. And Bill Maskell, the head coach for MSU Texas, is giving the official on his side an earful. I'm not sure what he has to complain about. There hasn't been anything egregious. These officials have missed. His t a, his team's up 14-0, and B, his quarterback has missed a few big plays in this game. I'd be more upset about that than anything that the officials, anything that's happened as far as the officiating so far in this game. They actually are going to spot the ball to 35. I could have sworn that Marcus Wilkerson got contacted by that football about four yards upfield, but it, it's splitting hairs if you're the Havlin as you have to go score a touchdown either way. It'll be first and 10 for Detmer in this offense with 3.50 to go in the first quarter. MSU Texas ahead 14 to nothing. In this football game, they scored first on a blocked field goal, which Josh Watermeyer returned 75 yards for a score. And then they scored after Tamuk botched a kickoff. MSU Texas fell on it. And they converted it into a 12-yard touchdown pass from Leighton Rab to Jawan Johnson. Rab's 19th touchdown pass of the season. Tamuk, moving from left to right, gets the ball on the hash on the near side, which is also the right side. Pistol formation, three receivers. Jeff Carr behind Cordetmer Jr. Mustang show blitz, here they come as Detmer drops back to throw in the flat. Wide open is Hertel, he's got a first down. Runs over a man as he crosses midfield. And Brent Hertel with a rude hello to Cervell Ford who is still down on the near side. And Ford, one of the most important players on this defense, has 54 tackles. That's Sixth in the LSC, he's been an all-conference player each of the last two seasons. We certainly hope he is okay. Hertel obviously not doing anything dirty there, just trying to lower his head and pick up a few more yards. Ford, a senior from Richmond, Texas, and Coach Bill Maskell and company over there checking on one of their starting safeties. And this, this has to be just such a frustrating start to the game for the Havlinas and Coach Darren Wilkinson. Their offense has moved the ball. Their defense really has played great, and yet somehow they find themselves down 14 to nothing. And I remember talking with Wilkerson last year. It seemed like last year the Hawks were victims of such bad luck on so many occasions. 
And I remember asking him during the 2013 season, as Tori Thomas, great sportsmanship by the senior Thomas coming over to wish Cervell Ford the best. He's helped off the field. Asking Wilkerson, Wilkinson last year, you had to fight the feeling as a team of being snake bit when you have so many bad things happen. And Wilkinson did miss a beat. He goes, I don't, really, I don't like that word. Like, no, we, we don't, we don't let that feeling permeate in our locker room. We just worry about the things that we can control. And certainly, as a coach, you never want a team to get that feeling like no matter what we do, we're just always going to be pushing that rock up the hill. But when you have a game like this, if you're the Hogs, just human nature has to sink in, it has to kind of, kind of creep in and go, geez, what the heck do we have to do to, to win a football game or to start getting some breaks or to get a lead? Pistol formation, two receivers for Detmer. Back to throw, plenty of time. Pass high, left side, it is caught. And wrestled down. Is Tyler Wilson. And Tamuk with a gain of seven, and it'll be second and three. Two receivers to the near side. One man left at Murr's shotgun again. Gives to Jeff Carr. Knife into the line ahead of the 35. Spins right and nearly escapes with a tackle to the 32. A 10-yard run for Jeff Carr. And that moves the chains once again. Two ten to go as we near the end of the first quarter. Detmer with a single back formation under center sends Connor Perkins in motion. Play fake to him, looking left flat. Perkins with plenty of room makes the catch across the 30 and a diving tackle at the 29 yard line drops him there. Stop made by Paul Manis. A gain of three. There's that short passing game. And Havilinas have used it pretty effectively so far in this game. 90 seconds to go before this quarter ends. And Kingsville, once again, very deliberate in their pace, not wanting to move too quickly. And credit to Wilkinson and this coaching staff. He has a plan. He's sticking to it, even with this team down a couple touchdowns. There's still plenty of football left. Chest high snap to Detmer in the shotgun. Give to Carr, looking for a hole. Right side dragged down by DJ Doggett. No gain for Carr. Third down and seven. And at this, there's a big difference here between being willing to try a field goal and it being four down territory. Because if you're willing to go for it on fourth down, you don't need to go for seven yards. You can go for four or five yards on this play. But if you are going to kick a field goal, okay, obviously you have to go and try and get past the sticks. So I think the play calling here might give us a little bit of a hint as to what Darren Wilkinson is thinking. Four receivers, Detmer sends Carr in motion near side. Throwing back left, a screen, a pass high to Dilworth, and he loses yardage. And Detmer heading to the sideline, it might just be to get the play in. And I think that play, I would expect that play would have told us, and as it, uh, never mind, that will be the, we'll find out. Once we come back from break, as the first quarter ends here at Havelina Stadium, we'll be back in 30 seconds to score at the end of one, the Mustangs 14, and the Havelinas nothing. We'll be right back on the Havelina Sports Network and KTAI.
One quarter in the books. Midwestern stayed ahead 14 to nothing here at Havelina Stadium on a 75-yard blocked field goal return for a touchdown by Josh Watermeyer and a 12-yard touchdown pass from Leighton Rabb to Jawan Johnson. And to Moose offense back out on the field on fourth and nine. We talked about earlier how whether, whether or not Darren Wilkinson is still willing to trust his field goal unit with possibly his kicker out. Not to mention the long snap issues. And this seems to indicate no. Shotgun for Detmer on fourth and nine. Pressure coming over the middle for Armstrong incomplete. Pass tipped away as on the spot was Paul Manis. And to move turns it over on downs. First half stats. 124 yards for the Havilinas, 26 for MSU Texas. Denver 8 of 10 for 79 yards. Leighton Rav 1 of 7 for 12 yards. Of course, that one touchdown. And Tamuk with possessing the ball for 12 minutes and 21 seconds out of the opening 15. These stats are sp are uh, displayed or, or favor the Havilinas massively. They still find themselves down. 14 to nothing. Are skewed, I should say, massively into Mook's favor as Rab with a read option keeper tries the left side and picks up three to the 34. Rab in the pistol with three receivers. To move with four down linemen. Rab taking his time, not wanting to rush anything here. And why would he? Takes a snap, giving it to Johnson. Tries the left side. Runs into Havilinas in a hurry. Spins off a couple tackles and gets positive yardage before Peyton Hendricks with some help from Sean Sims. Or check that, make that Vaughn Taylor. Finally bring him down at the 37. Third down and four coming up for the Mustangs. It's almost misleading looking at the depth chart for MSU Texas and see number 34, Vincent Johnson, as the number two running back. But as we've mentioned, he's one of the best running backs in the LSC. Rab with a bunch to the near side. And now they send a man in motion. That's Quincy Childs going to the left side. Out of three, here comes a blitz. Plenty of time. Pass caught by Johnson. He's hit immediately, but he has a first down. And that's just the third first down for the Mustangs so far in this game. Grab shotgun with four receivers, trips to the near side. Through bringing another blitz, Rab with plenty of time, throwing deep down the middle, over through Quincy Childs. Perfect coverage by Devontae Williams. And second down and 10. Up next for Rab and company. Rab and MSU began the season 5-0. and They scored at least 30 points in each of their first five games. They topped 50 points twice, including against Angelo State, where they, who they beat 54-36. to Back on the 22nd. They opened the season with a 55-point outing against Humboldt State. Rab with a rush in his face. Lays it up deep. Has an open man. Caught the 20. Running away 10. 5. Touchdown to Jawan Johnson. With Brandon Jones in his face. Leighton Rab cool as cash as he sat back in the pocket and found Jawan Johnson for the touchdown. And here is Jason Imbriani ready to, ready to attempt the extra point. And Seminon has been to Moose best cover guy this season. He just got burned by one of the best receivers in the country as Imbriani's extra point is up and good with 13.03 to go in the second quarter. The score is 
Midwestern State 21 and the Havilinas nothing. Now, I wanted to mention uh, Seminot versus Johnson because Seminot, other than that hitch and go and, of course, his touchdown uh, pass that, uh, that Leighton Rabb found Jawan Johnson on, Seminot has been all over all over Jawan Johnson. You know, there were a couple of instances where Johnson, you know, either had a pass that went over his head or, or Seminot was in the area to uh, prevent Jawan from getting the football. Uh, but I, I think overall the coverage from Jordan Seminot, you, it's, it's your number one guy against their number one guy. And Jordan has had a solid game minus those two touchdowns. And one of, one of Seminot's best traits is that he's an aggressive corner. He has three interceptions on the season. He leads the Lone Star Conference in pass breakups. He has nine this season. And he is an aggressive guy. He goes, he tries to make plays. And a lot of times, like last week when he had an interception, he took back for a touchdown. A lot of times, that can be a huge benefit for a defense having a corner who's willing to, who's willing to take those chances. A good example of that was a guy who used to be one of the best corners in the NFL for years, a guy by the name of Asante Samuel was notorious for being aggressive, trying to jump routes, go for interceptions, and a lot of times that works. Sometimes, unfortunately, that leads to the other team getting big plays. And that's looks like what happened right there as Johnson and Rab connect the second touchdown completion between those two tonight. And that one went for 58 yards. Rab just 3 of 10, but has 75 yards. That was his 20th touchdown pass of the season. Again, against just one interception. So his completion percentage... It's not going to look any brighter after today, but he'll take the two touchdowns, not to mention a three-score lead just two minutes into the second quarter. Timuth looking for a spark. Aaron Jackson and Jeff Carwell trying to provide it on special teams. As Imbriani with the boot down the center of the field, Aaron Jackson will let it go through the end zone for a touchback. Detmer and this offense will begin at their own 25 again. And for Kingsville, moving the ball certainly has not been the issue so far. It has been converting opportunities. And the PA announcer to our right announcing that the Astros Red Sox game is in the second inning with no score for those of you who may hold an interest in such things. Tamuk with the ball on the right half to start this possession. Hogs go, going from right to left here in quarter number two. Connor Perkins and Aaron Dilworth are the two receivers near side. To the single line right now. Perkins goes in motion and now goes back out to the left side. Hand off to Pellerin. In the line cuts outside. Almost broke away. But a vice-like grip by Marcus Wilkerson would not let him escape. He probably had at least five more yards out there, but Wilkerson locked him up tight and wouldn't let him go. Only a yard for Pellerin. Pellerin with 308 yards this season, averaging five and a half yards per carry, has four touchdowns. That's a team high. And he stays in and single back with Detmer under center. Dilworth near side singled out with Jaden Cunningham. Detmer, quick pass right on a comeback to Wilson. Wilson makes the catch across the 30. He drops the 31 by Demarcus Wilson. Third down and four. These have mostly been manageable third downs for the Havlinians tonight. I can't remember a third down and 10, which is exactly the downs you want to avoid against an MSU team that likes to pressure the passer. We've seen third and twos become third and sevens, but not quite 10, as you mentioned. The Mustangs looking for their first three and out of the night. Brent Hertel goes in motion as the H back on the left side. Hand off to Carr. Into the line. Gets a couple. But he will not get and make that Pellerin who does not get close to the marker. Third down becomes fourth down. And I guess Julio de la Garza is okay. He comes on to punt. De La Garza's longest kick of the season, 58 yards with a 36.6 yard average. And Juwan Johnson back to receive this punt. Pretty good at this 
as well as Juwan Johnson. 12.4 yards of punt return. MSU showing pressure. A good snap to De La Garza. Gets off a high line drive kick that Johnson calls for a fair catch and makes at the MSU 35. That's a 33-yard punt by De La Garza. And Kamuk's defense back to work. I'm curious to see how much MSU tries to big play. Jordan Seminot is not in the game. Josh Wilson is now occupying the spot of corner on the near side. Seminot is on the bench. He is with he is holding his helmet in his right hand. Wilson has seen action this season, but Seminot has been the main guy at that spot for to move. Pistol formation for receivers. And up Johnson, right side. Clarkson misses a tackle, but, and there's plenty of support, but Johnson slips through everybody. 45, cuts left to the 50. Middle of the field to the 40, and drags the defender to the 36. Johnson, there's a flag back near the line of scrimmage, and Leighton Rabb is standing even with that penalty, not ready to accept this game yet. And they get a hold on Caleb Brown, the right tackle. So a great effort by Johnson goes for naught. That was a gain of nearly 30. But in holding penalty knocks the Mustangs back 10 yards. I was curious as to why uh, a two or three yard gain suddenly became a nearly 30 yard gain. You've got to give credit to Johnson. He doesn't average nearly eight yards a carry by accident. He's a tough runner. Grab, and the shotgun takes a snap. Drops deep in the pocket, looking down the middle. Complete across the 40 to the 45 and dumped at the 47 is Quentin Childs. Jalen Harrison almost got a hand on that. Probably felt the ball as it zoomed past his fingertips. And just like that, it's a first down, a gain of 21. Grab with a play fake. Looking near side on a slant incomplete trying to hit Xavier Land. Good job by Nick Stiff. He read that route and got in front of it. And if Rab had thrown that pass on target, it probably would have been an interception. Rajon Crenshaw and Jordan Seminot have been the starting quarters for the Hawks the last two weeks. Neither one of them is on the field. That's Aaron Jackson and Josh Wilson with the safeties, Williams, Landez, and Hendricks. Second and 10, Rab. Quick pump fake, now throwing deep on the near side for a land, caught and dropped by Josh Wilson at the 31. That was a beautiful move by Land to see the football as it was coming back and then adjust to it to make the catch and give MSU Texas another first down. So tough for a defensive back to adjust because he's just basing it on the receivers. He's not basing it on the ball. The defensive back is playing the receiver a lot of times, not the ball. So when the guy makes an adjustment, tough for a, for a player like Wilson to adjust with him. First down and 10. Ball in the near hash for MSU Texas as Jawan Johnson comes in motion. Now Rab looking down the field. Has a man wide open. It's Childs caught at the 12. Back inside, loses the football. But the officials are going to say he stepped out of bounds. Aaron Jackson had the ball and was off to the races. But the two, both officials there made the same signal that Child stepped out of bounds. And boy, did he ever get waffled by Sean Landes. That's another opportunity for Kingsville that, that you look at as that's just a bad break. You know, there's, you know that would have been you know, probably six points for Aaron Jackson the other way. If not, nothing else, it's an opportunity in the red zone that's ended. But yeah, bad Good luck for MSU Texas. Has them first attempt at the 11. Showing blitz are the Hogs. Lend, or Le Leighton Ramp throwing left side in the back of the end zone. Pass is caught by Juwan Johnson. Touchdown Mustangs. Third touchdown hookup of the night already between Rab and Juwan Johnson. There was a lot of contact in the end zone before he made the catch with. There was an Aaron awful Jackson lot of contact, but. 
Johnson and Jackson, who are about the same height, went up for it, and Johnson came down with it. Jackson has been the guy that offenses have picked on a lot this season. And J uh, Johnson, who's one of the best receivers in the conference, made the play there. Extra point by Imbriani is up and good. 8.47 to go in the first half. The score is the Mustangs 28, and the Havling is nothing innate. We talked about how just some, some bad luck or some mistakes, just some poor plays for the Havling that's had staked MSU Texas to a 14 to nothing lead. But you have to give credit where credit is due. These last two, t these last two drives, MSU Texas has really taken over. They force, they score a touchdown, force a three and out, get the ball back, score another touchdown. They're up 28. These last two scores, they have 100% earned. 100% earned, and you know, again, that that uh, fumble uh, towards the end with Childs making the catch, stepping out of bounds. You know, if he didn't step out of bounds and Aaron Jackson was able to run down the other side of the field. It'd obviously be a different score. If the, if the field goal attempt by Julio de la Garza is contained, or at least there's a clean enough snap for Casey Rosalina to, to hold, there's probably not another uh, fumble return for a touchdown. So you could, you could uh, argue, you could take two of these touchdowns off the board with MSU Texas, and the way that TA, uh, Texas A&M Kingsville has played at this point dominated the time of possession, dominated the yardage, it would be a very different football game. Now you can certainly look at the beginning of this game and say, hey, if, if Rossellini falls on that ball rather than letting De La Garza try and kick it or not, both trying to blame Casey Rossellini in that situation, it's hard. I mean, it's such a split-second thing. It's hard to just make a decision. Also, you want points. You want to give your kicker a chance to kick it. I'm not trying to put blame on anybody. But if that's contained and it just becomes a turnover on downs, then maybe the beginning of this game starts differently. But that's... That's not an excuse for, or that, that doesn't, these last two touchdowns, that, that had nothing to do with the last two scores that the Mustangs have put up. And Brian to kick it deep once again to Jackson and Carr. Looking for the first opportunity to return a kick this evening. And Jackson will take it a few yards deep. And he's going to run it out. Five yards deep in the middle of the field to the 10. To the 15, squirts ahead to the 20 and gets to the 21 before he is tackled. So not the worst decision in the world, certainly for Aaron Jackson. And Kingsville will go back on offense. Detmer in this game, 9 of 12. So good completion percentage, but for just 92 yards, he has, excuse me, he has not thrown an interception so far in this game, but his team still looking for their first touchdown. Tyler Wilson near side, two receivers right side. Pistol formation, Dilworth comes in motion, play fake to Dilworth, hand off to Carr into the heart of the defensive line. And he might have lost a yard. And a man is down and it's one of Kingsville's offensive linemen. That is unfortunately a familiar sight for this team. I believe it's Justin Johnson. But the Hawks have seen so many of their offensive linemen suffer injuries. It really has been just a, a one kind of bad break after another for this Havelina line. And another example of that, there is Justin Johnson, or check that, make that Joseph Partita who's on his feet and heading off the field jogging as well. That's a good sign. This offensive line started off at the starting five of Narciso Grimaldo at right tackle, Joseph Partita at right guard, Omar Wilkins at center, Armando Castillo at left guard, and Kyle Quino at left tackle. And that has changed a lot, to say the least. Grimaldo obviously is, is back in. He has resumed his duties back on the line. But Wilkins is Wilkins is is out today. As is Cart as his partita pass right side for Dilworth, who is dropped and his helmet is ripped off at around the 26, so he'll have to come out for a play. And it will be third down and six for Tamuk. And now Partita comes back in to replace Moses Horn. Kyle Quino has been kicked inside. And Justin Johnson has taken over the spot at right tackle as Josh Hockless comes in. Jorge Rios has, has needed to take over the duties 
at guard with Partita moved to center with the loss of Wilson. Just so many changes on this line. It's so hard to adjust at a critical spot. As Detmer fades back to pass with the middle for Hertel is hit immediately and planted in the ground. Great hit by the defender at the spot of the play. And he's wearing 33. MSU Texas did not put a 33 on their travel roster. But a good play by the inside linebacker to keep Hertel a yard short of the marker. You know, Texas A&M Kingsville, the, their defense has played uh, about as well as you can considering their circumstances. But i got to give credit to the Mustang defense. They've really played well in the early going. They've buckled down when they needed to. I think that's that should be said. De La Garza with a good kick. It's taken by Johnson at the 40. Up the center of the field to the 45, and is tackled to the 48-yard line. Justin Johnson, one of the men in, the, in on the stop for Tamuk. And good field position again for Leighton Rab as the Mustangs threatening to turn this thing into a route here in the first half. Daryl French is in at left defensive end. This will be the first action for the freshman Daryl French this season to join the club from Sinton High School, one of the one of the freshmen on this roster, one of four freshmen on the roster, along with Josh Oglesby, Keyshawn Rowe, and Karch Casper. Pistol formation, Johnson comes in motion. Handoff to Vincent Johnson, and Brandon Jones is right there to stand him up in the backfield. No gain for the Mustang tailback. Six thirty-three to go in the second quarter. The score is the Mustangs twenty-eight and the Havelina's nothing. And there's a player down on the far side, so play is stopped at least for the moment. Jordan Seminot is back in for the Havelinas, and that makes me wonder if that's Aaron Jackson who's down on the far side. And sure enough, it is Jackson being helped off. So Seminot and Wilson now at the corner spots for Tamuk. Williams, Landez, Hendricks are the safeties. Harrison and Tut are the linebackers. Nick Stiff is in the game as well. And a dime defense for Tamuk on second and ten. Rapp sends Jawan Johnson in motion to the inside. Now drops back to pass. Has time. Jones coming in. Getting the pass off is Rab, And spun down just short of the marker is Xavier Land. And that will set up third down in about a yard. Johnson in the game. We have not seen much of Adrian Seal since that opening series. Pistol formation. Third and short. Kingsville showing a blitz. They jump off sides. And that was Vaughn Taylor who touched the center. And that'll give up the five yards for the first down. And a frustrated Peyton Hendricks, the first man up to the line, to provide a few words of wisdom for Kingsville's nose tackle. And Taylor immediately taken out of the game for Jamar Davis. Maybe you thought you could uh, flip the field on a third and two right around midfield. Critical, critical penalty. Spread offense again for the Mustangs. Kingsville with three men on the line. Rab dropping back under pressure, throwing left off the hands of Jawanson on the sideline, far side incomplete. Twenty-eight nothing is the score. MSU leading with under five and a half minutes to go before halftime. The Havelinas, for what it's worth, will receive the second half kickoff. Three receivers near side: Tennyson, Johnson, and Edwards. Brad, who is eight of seventeen tonight, awaiting the snap. 
looking to throw once again. A big blitz comes and throws it near side. Johnson in the flat, hit by Seminot, and eventually dropped at the 36-yard line as Jalen Harrison comes over to make the tackle. Four-yard gain, third down and six. You know, the scary thing about this MSU Texas team is while we have heard Jawan Johnson's name a lot tonight, you know, Xavier Land is a talented receiver. Kylan Harrison has four touchdown receptions on the year. And I think a name we haven't heard so far tonight, Anthony Tennyson led the team in touchdown receptions coming into tonight. Yeah, Tennyson has six. That's tied for the most in the conference. Rab is not without weapons, as we said pregame. On third down, chest high snap to Rab. Throwing deep on the left side. Overthrew his man, Tennyson, who was being covered tightly by Devontae Williams. Tennyson wants a flag. Devontae Williams with his hands to the sky as if to say, flag for what? It'll be fourth down and six. And the offense is not coming off the field for MSU. And it's the first half. You can't convince any coach, I don't think, in the first half that they have a big enough lead. And they... The Mustangs are out of field goal range for Imbriani, whose longest boot of the season is 46 yards. And coaches don't like to punt when they get in this position on the field. So fourth and six, the Mustangs are, are going for it. Edwards goes in motion left to right. Grab to pass, blitz coming, has time over the middle, caught by Johnson inside the 15. Tackled by Josh Wilson at the 10. A gain of 25, and not bad coverage there by Wilson, but just a ball put in a perfect spot, and give credit to Juwan Johnson, a nice catch as well. Johnson's over 100 yards receiving on the night. And not much that the Kingsville cornerback could do on that play, first and goal. Rab looking for his fourth touchdown pass already, looking left, looking for Edwards, in the end zone, goes up high and makes the catch. Touchdown Mustangs, what a throw and catch by Rab, he has found his groove. That slow start is a distant memory. Four touchdown passes for the senior. And it's throws like that that have him on the short list for the Harlan Hill Award. Now here is Imbriani for the PAT. Extra point try, sails through. 4-11 ago in the second quarter, the score, the Mustangs 35, and the Havilinas nothing. And late Rab really has been outstanding tonight. You take out the one for seven start, and even with that, one of that one pass was for a touchdown. Rab has been every bit as good as advertised this evening. One of seven to start the game, and remember that one reception was a touchdown pass to Jawan Johnson. Since then, 10 completions and 14 attempts. He's been on fire. For 185 yards and three touchdowns, no interceptions. Rab and this offense have gotten into a group. That's obviously what you wanted to avoid if you were the Havilinas. This defense that came in as the 11th best in the country as far as preventing yards through the air and Rab and this offense doing a lot in just the first half of this game to blow up that average I think the other thing that uh, we sort of sensed coming in it was a last second loss that the Mustangs went through uh, last week at APG Stadium in North Texas and they wanted to make a statement you know they know that they fell eight spots in the latest top 25 poll they think they're a lot better than number 12 in the country. And Brian ready to kick it off. And MSU Texas, again, they started off slow. The Havlinas had an opportunity to establish themselves in this football game early as Aaron Jackson takes the kick off in the end zone. Out to the five across the hash marks. Getting, getting near the 15, but he is not going to get any further. He is dropped. Stomped up, stacked up there. The final tackle made by Justin Jones. The Hogs had an opportunity to establish themselves, gain some momentum early, and let those opportunities get away with a blocked field goal and then a mistake on a kickoff and put Timuka in a hole they couldn't dig out of. Then MSU found their rhythm, and the lead has just grown from there to the point where now it's 35 to nothing. Now, dating back to the, the other home games that we've done this season, we've seen 
tipped interceptions. We've seen bobbled snaps being returned for touchdowns. We've, we've seen it all. And you can look at, you can certainly look at the start of this game as Detmer under center and an offset eye sends Torrey Thomas wide to the far side right. Aaron Dilworth wide left. Detmer to throw. Looking left has Dilworth open. A slotting attempt, but he couldn't make the catch. Oh, actually, they're gonna, the line judge is calling it a reception at the 20. I thought that ball hit the ground, but the line judge called it a catch. First down to the 29. And you can certainly look at the, the start of this game, 14-0, and say, ah, you know, a couple of mistakes. Just some, some bad luck. Oh, you know, you can say Midwestern State kind of got lucky. But not to be too harsh, there's no excuse for the last three touchdowns that have been scored to make it 35 to nothing. Is Detmer to throw? Looking yes right, right for Dilworth. Makes the catch. Tries to make a move, but right on him to make the tackle was Cunnigan. Second down. And Detmer at least maintaining his poise right now with the clock down to 310. Kingsville with all three timeouts in case you were wondering. And Carr is the deep back in the pistol formation. Then with two receivers dropping back in the pocket. Throwing it over the middle. It's batted down at the line. And it will be third down and four. And that's one of the disadvantages with Detmer being only five foot ten, he's certainly made the most of his talents this season, but there are times when you just can't throw over guys. And third down and four from the 35 coming up for the Hogs. Martinez and Wilson to the far side. Connor Perkins, the receiver near side, goes in motion. Play fake to Perkins. Right flat for Perkins, deep in the backfield. There's a long way to go. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage and no further. Perkins had about eight yards to go once he caught that just to get back to the, the start where the play started. That was great coverage by MSU Texas. They had about three Mustangs waiting for that it was, tackle. It was good pursuit, too. As soon as he caught it, everyone flowed to the ball. It was They made it tough on Perkins right off the bat to try and make it to the marker. And another punt from De La Garza coming up. This is his third punt today as Jawan Johnson waits at his own 33. The guards averaging just 32 yards a punt. That's a few yards below his season average. He's been excellent at pinning teams inside the 20 this season. High kick. Looks like his best punt of the day so far. Johnson makes the catch at the 31. That's another 32-yard kick for De La Garza. And MSU with 156 to go, and that is plenty of time for Rab and this offense. And Rab in the pistol with four receivers. On first and ten. Three linemen for the Javelinas. Here comes the rush. Time for Rapp. Where's it left flat for Johnson? Or check that across the 35. Breaking tackles to the 40. Was Xavier Land. He's got eight yards. Second down coming up for the Javelinas. Or I should say for the Mustangs. Rab over 200 yards passing today is looking for another looking for some more passing right side caught by Juwan Johnson at the 45 tackled immediately by Seminot but the Mustangs move the chains again with a minute 20 to play Rab with a minute nine and counter to play still has as I mentioned, all three timeouts. Things with defense searching for some answers as Rab fades back one more time. Deep ball, left side for Edwards, batted away by Aaron Jackson. 
the sophomore in good position. That's his fourth pass breakup of the season. Brings up. Mustangs under a minute to go, second down coming up. Cody Gardner and Darrell French back on the defensive line with Brandon Jones. Kingsville again with just two linebackers, Harrison and Tut. Tut the team's leading tackler with 44 stops. Rab looking over the middle, wide open but batted away. A great diving play by Jalen Harrison. Harrison, a sophomore linebacker with 30 tackles on the season. His second, his first season as a starter. Saw plenty of extensive action last season for the Hogs. You know, it's been encouraging to see Harrison. You know, there was that one pass that Rab threw that zipped by Harrison's fingers, but he seems to be in tune with what Rab is presenting. The reason they have Harrison and Tut in the game in this situation, they feel like these are their, they're probably their two best linebackers in pass defense. Grab on third down, hand off to Johnson. Right side, he's going to get the first down, 35. Middle of the field to the 30. Right side, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Vincent Johnson. Johnson takes the carry on third and 10 and goes 45 yards untouched for the sixth touchdown of the night for MSU. And credit to... Bill Maskell and his offensive coordinator Adam Austin. The Hogs not looking for a run in any way, shape, or form on third and ten. Gave it to his breakaway back, and he did just that. Sprung one for a 45-yard touchdown. Embryonis. PAT is blocked. Sean Lend is chasing it. He'll, it will go out of the end zone. So with 45 seconds to go in the first half, the score is the Mustangs 41 and the Javelinas nothing. Credit to Landes, trying to feel that blocked kick. Look like looking for those two points here at the end of the half. Look like one of the guys in the center of the line, I believe, was Cody Gardner, got a hand on it. So we'll see how aggressively Darren Wilkinson and his offense play this at the end of the half. And this MSU Texas team looks like they came in here expecting to win. They came in here, I'm assuming, we're trying to get that bad taste of last week's loss out of their mouth. And they have played like it tonight. Last year, these two teams played, even though. MSU won by 22 points. That was a competitive game that the Havelinas were in up until late in the fourth quarter when the Mustangs scored their last touchdown. That was, again, that was a lot closer than the final score, but so far in this one, it has been all Mustangs. The score tells the story. And... Imbriani approaches with Jackson and Carr back to receive. A low line drive kick that bounces and almost goes out of bounds, but the official rules it made it to the end zone. And out of bounds, first and 10 from the 25. I'm reminded of a quote by the owner of the New York Giants, John Mara, who a couple of years ago, the Giants lost a game at home by a score of 51 to 17. And the New York media, everyone knows how ferocious they are. They asked Mara after the game about what about his, for his thoughts and Mara simply said this performance speaks for itself and I think that for the Javelinas and for the Mustangs that this that is a phrase that could similarly be applied tonight as Detmer fades back to throw deep ball in the middle for Torrey Thomas incomplete Thomas going up trying to grab it was trying for a jump ball against Khalil Finley and Thomas helping up Finley as both teams head back to the huddles, second and ten. 38 seconds to play. 41-0 is our score. MSU leading to Mook. Yeah. 
Detmer in the shotgun. Back to pass down the right side for Dilworth. Caught, makes him a miss. Crossing the 40, cuts towards the middle of the field. And now wisely dives out of bounds at the 41. That play took seven seconds and gained 16 yards. And they actually spot Dilworth at the 40, so make it a 15-yard gain. They, they dock a yard from the junior receiver from Corpus Christi. Detmer to pass once again. And the right side for Dilworth, he caught it. Was the inbounds? No, says the side judge. Second and 10. Ball on the 40. Third down for this offense. I could swear it's second down, but the scoreboard says it's third down, and I can't see the down marker. Detmer Jr. back to throw over the middle for Thomas. Caught it high, then dropped it. They're going to call that a fumble. Looks like an incomplete pass to me. But no, that is a fumble. Ball to the Mustangs. So MSU will begin this position at the Tamuk 43. Looking at the replay, that is really close. Thomas did make the catch. It looked like he took two steps, but got hit almost as right as he was taking that second step. It was a really close play, but the officials called it a fumble. And the Mustangs with all three timeouts trying to move four more points. Rab looking right side. Pass caught by Land. Right out of bounds at around the 35. That play took five seconds. 11 ticks remaining. And Rab so far in this game, just a spectacular stat line. 16 to 25, 227 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Rab with four receivers in this quad set. Back to pass, steps up in the pocket, throws for Johnson, gets away from a defender, crosses the 30, is dropped at the 29. A timeout with three seconds left. Would, I was, I am assuming, set the stage for Imbriani. And like I said before, in the first half, you couldn't convince any coach but that they have a lead that's too big. So any accusations of running up the score, I think, could be thrown out the window. It's the first half. A coach's mentality in the first half is simply, hey, we need more points. Once you get to the second half, you have a big lead like this, then your mentality as a coach should change to, hey, let's run out the clock and let's not try to rub the other team's nose in it. But in this kind of, kind of a spot, you're always looking for, for more points. It's it's 35 nothing. let's make it 42 nothing. It's 41 nothing. let's make it 44 to nothing. Your mentality is just still stays with, all right, more, more, more. And Leighton Rab is going to stay on the field. They will not have Imbriani attempt this field goal. If he kicked it, it would be his longest. And with three seconds left, this will be the final play of the half. Three receivers left. I'd imagine that's where Rab is going to go with this, I'm assuming, will be what will be a deep ball into the end zone. Chest I snap, Rab dropping back in the shotgun, looking left side, throws it up deep in the end zone. Of course, the back of the end zone, it sails through the end zone. So a what well, has been a great half for Rab ends on a relatively sour note as he throws that ball out of the end zone. But as it is a dominant first half, for MSU Texas we hit halftime here in Kingsville the score at the end of 30 minutes is MSU 41 and to move nothing we're gonna take a two-minute break we'll be right back with the halftime show this is Havelina football on the Havelina Sports Network and KTAI
Welcome back to Pepsi Field at Javelina Stadium here in Kingsville. The halftime score, MSU Texas 41, Texas A&M Kingsville nothing. I'm Nate Cotiso alongside Mark and Sarah. We're going to take a look at our first half stats and, you know, the disparity that we saw in the first quarter with Texas A&M Kingsville outgaining MSU Texas 124 to 26. As it stands, the Mustangs now with 298 yards of offense in the first half to Texas A&M Kingsville's 179. Juwan Johnson for, te uh, for MSU Texas had a ball in the first half, seven receptions, 128 yards, and three scores. And of course, as we mentioned in the first half, Leighton Rabb starting the game one of seven for 12 yards in that TD pass to Juwan Johnson is now 15 of 28 for 233 yards and four touchdowns for MSU Texas. Rab has been able to find four different receivers in addition to Johnson. Xavier Land has four catches for 47 yards. Quentin Childs has a couple of catches for 41 yards. And Tyreek Edwards caught that uh, the second to last touchdown of the first half for MSU Texas, an 11 yard strike from Rab to Edwards to make up the four touchdowns for the Mustangs. For Texas A&M Kingsville, not a whole lot you can complain about offensively speaking. You know, there was a little bit of worry as to how well Coy Detmer Jr. would play after not playing much of the second half last week against the Wolves of Western Oregon. So far today, 16 of 22 for 133 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions. He, it should also be mentioned that he hasn't uh, taken a sack at all. And certainly we've seen some of the uh, injury issues that the Kingsville offensive line have had to deal with this season. We had one offensive lineman go out uh, earlier in the second quarter, but for him to not take a sack is certainly a plus for Darren Wilkinson and the Texas A&M Kingsville Javelinas. Running the football, Jeff Carr had a couple of uh, double-digit runs uh, earlier in that first quarter. His first rush of the game was for, 10, for 11 yards, which is his longest of the night, and he later on had a rush of 10 yards, and he's had three other carries to make up uh, two yards to equal the 23 yards that he, is, that he has put together so far in the first half. Nick Pellrin has had the most carries uh, on, the, on the team so far with seven carries for 21 yards. And uh, his longest rush was for uh, 10 yards earlier. And we also saw Connor Perkins have a carry for three yards as well. Receiving-wise, uh, we've seen some balance uh, with the Kingsville offense so far. Aaron Dilworth has had five receptions for 43 yards. Torrey Thomas has made a couple of catches over the middle. He's got three catches for 15 yards. Brett Hurdle, the tight end, the senior tight end, with two receptions for 20 yards. And Tyler Wilson had two catches for five yards. One of those plays went for negative yardage. As it stands right now, it's 28 to nothing, or 41 to nothing, MSU Texas over Texas A&M Kingsville. The Javelina Band is playing here at Javelina Stadium. So we thought it'd be a good idea for now to take a look around the Lone Star Conference. There were some games that took place earlier this afternoon. I know there was a big game between uh, Texas A&M Commerce, the, the Commerce football team, as we get this schedule up the best that we can. Some early games we've we see, we've seen some games tip off at 4 p.m. Central Time. Uh, typically, we've seen this season uh, for Lone Star Conference games tipping up, tipping out around 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And it doesn't appear that we have the scores at this particular moment. But to recap this first half a little bit more, uh, what can you say about Leighton Rab that hasn't been said already? 233 yards passing, uh, four touchdowns, and three of those touchdowns coming in, the, or two of those touchdowns coming in the second quarter of action. MSU Texas has played really good football, and you figured they would after losing a heartbreaker of a match last week at Apogee Stadium in Denton, 20-19 to to the ninth-ranked Texas A&M Commerce Lions. These things happen sometimes as uh, you're playing a matchup between two top ten teams, in the, uh, from last week's AFCA Top 25 poll with Texas A&M Commerce taking care uh, of business 20 to 19 over MSU Texas in Denton. And as for tonight, 
as it stands right now, uh, speaking of commerce, Tarleton State 47, Texas A&M Commerce 21. That's a that's a major that's a major score between two top 25 teams. As we mentioned, Commerce had to deal with MSU Texas, who was ranked fourth last week as the number nine team, and coming into this week, Tarleton came in as number 16 in the latest AFCA top 25 poll. That is the final score, and so it appears that the Tarleton's for real. They're six and zero now. 5-0 and in Lone Star Conference competition, while A&M Commerce falls to 5-2 and with a 3-1 and record in the Lone Star Conference. And if you thought this week was tough for Texas A&M Kingsville dealing with the Mustangs of MSU Texas, the Javelinas will be on the road next week to take on Tarleton, 6-0, and and their bright and shiny 5-0 and record in LSC play. Elsewhere in the Lone Star Conference, West Texas A&M with the 26 18 victory over Angelo State in San Angelo. So it's been a wild sequence of games so far in Lone Star Conference competition with the road teams taking them in both uh, early action. Also in action tonight, Humboldt State taking on UTPB. Western New Mexico's on the road at Eastern New Mexico. And of course, our game here, MSU Texas 41, Texas A&M Kingsville nothing. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in two minutes. This is Javelina Football on the Javelina Sports Network and KTAI 91.1.
Havelina Band just finishing up here on Pepsi Field at the site of Havelina Stadium. The Midwestern State Mustangs with a 41 to nothing lead at halftime over the Havelinas. And looking at the total stats, which I'm sure Nate Cortiso just mentioned, MSU really leading in all the relevant categories. 14 first downs to 8, 65 rushing yards to 146, 233 passing yards to 133. Also the big number, the Midwestern 3 of 3 on red zone chances and to move 0 of 6, 0 of 8 really when you look at third down and fourth downs. The only thing to move winning, they have nearly doubled the time of possession. I don't think Midwestern State is worried about that. And they, again, we talked before the half ended. There really was an opportunity at the start of this game for Kingsville to grab some momentum, put themselves in a spot where they'd be in this game all the way. But obviously a few plays that went MSU's way changed that. And the Mustangs really have just completely took over the second quarter of this game. They scored 28 points. Just a you mentioned before we came on, a well-oiled offensive machine. They have embodied that to a T tonight. I think uh, you look at the averages uh, coming into today, MSU Texas averaging over 520, I believe 522 yards of offense. Uh, they're at 298, so they're they're doing better than they normally would at the halfway point in this game. And, um, you know, you, you don't really expect, you know, even as good a team as MSU Texas is, you don't expect for a team to come on the road and sort of uh, have their way uh, with this Havelina defense. But while, you know, the numbers, you know, tell one story, obviously there have been specific plays that have just gone awry uh, in against Texas A&M and, uh, and Kingsville's favor. Uh, but, you know, the good teams, the ranked teams, are able to take advantage of whatever miscues might happen, whether forced or unforced, and turn those errors for their opponents into points for them. Yeah, there are 298 total yards. The 272 of those came in the second quarter. You remember the Mustangs, the end of the first quarter, had run 11 plays for 26 yards. They scored 28 points on 272 yards total offense in the second quarter of this game. Leighton Rab has just been outstanding, as we mentioned. 15-28, 233 yards, four touchdowns. Based on this tonight, he has my vote for the Harlan Hill Award. Uh, there's no way he won't get a nomination for that. Like He has looked every bit as good. I, I mean, we saw Luis Lopez here last year. Luis Lopez from the quarterback for Commerce who won the Harlan Hill Award. I've been far more impressed tonight with what I've seen from Rab than what I saw from Lopez last year. I think Rab looks like the best quarterback in the country right now. If you had a vote, you'd vote for him? 100%. Havelinas, on the other hand, down 41 nothing. Obviously, this is a tough spot. Like uh, This is one of those situations, and I don't mean to make light of this, where I'm glad I'm not the head coach because I would, I would not know what to say to a team when you go into that locker room and you're down by 41 points. I think the, the cliche thing that from a fan's perspective you would think is, oh, you say, hey, just ignore the score. It doesn't matter. Just play. Don't look at the scoreboard. Let's just go out and try and play a solid 30 minutes of football. And if you're a coaching staff, this gives you a kind of a bittersweet – opportunity if you will to evaluate your players because you could this there's still 30 minutes to play obviously you have an opportunity to look at the tape of these last 30 minutes and see who kept playing and see who didn't quit who didn't pack it in and just say hey the game's over screw it who do we have next week you have an opportunity as coaches have to see which guys because the guys who are going to keep playing and are going to keep playing hard and who are going to keep trying those are the guys that you want to build a program around. You don't want the guys who just, in this situation, just kind of give up and, you know, are laughing on the sidelines. I'm not saying anyone will be, but those are the kind of guys who I don't think any coach would want on their team. You don't want any, any guy who's just going to just gonna take the a second half off, even in a situation like this. Or I think for Wilkinson and the rest of his staff, you want to see how, how your roster, how these student-athletes you've recruited to come here, responds to a situation like this. And we also have to give credit on the other side to to Bill Maskell, who has been around the block for so long up in Wichita Falls. He's been the head coach there uh, since the early 2000s. He's a five-time Lone Star Conference Coach of the Year, all-time winningest coach in MSU Texas history. So, you know, he's been around the block. He's been a coach and uh, he's been an assistant coach at the D1 level, uh, dating back to the early 1970s. So uh, he knows how to build a program. He's been around big programs. He's been around successful programs. And, you know, this machine that he's got going up in Wichita Falls continues to churn 
down here in Kingsville tonight. Yeah, Maskell is in his 17th season at the helm of this MSU team. He has a record of 134 and 48. And for Maskell, he really has established this MSU team as one of the best teams in the country, one of the best Division II programs in the country. They've had a winning season 19 for 19 consecutive seasons. They've been in the rankings every season for, I think, the last 20-plus years. Like They have, and like you said, a lot of credit to Maskell, who has been here for a long time. He has put this this team, he's kind of put Wichita Falls on the map. There's a reason they're able to get excellent players like Late Rab to come here. It is because of the track record that Bill Maskell has established as the head at the the helm of this program. Both teams back on the field during their stretching right now as we wait for the second half to begin. The Mustangs leading this one by a score of 41 to nothing as the Havilinas will receive the second half kickoff. One just injury update. Julio De La Garza again back out on the field. He is kicking. So whatever injury he suffered during that initial field goal does not appear to be severe as he is able to come back out and is is practicing right now. Here's another question for you, Nate. If you're Bill Masco, how much do you play your starters in the second half? I think probably uh, the first couple of series and, and maybe if you're able to get another score or, or, or two, then then I think it's time to pull them because I know, uh, you know, you know I, I, I cover coaches, I guess in my full-time job, you know, I cover coaches that, you know, sometimes find themselves in, in times where, you know, they're up by a lot of points in the second half and you know, uh, a lot of those coaches like to like the opportunity to take their starters out and let some players that may not get the normal opportunities with the first team to get some opportunities to play uh, in the uh, in the second half of games if the outcome is is you know not in doubt. And also, MSU right now they're obviously trying to win the Lone Star Conference. Tarleton, as Nate mentioned, beat Commerce to beat them 47 to 21 in commerce in two weeks Tarleton is visiting Midwestern State in Wichita Falls so MSU will have a chance to mess up this whole race make it a, a three-way tie three teams with one loss they are as I said right back in the thick of the race for the Lone Star Conference title and they have Tarleton in they have Tarleton on the 27th after a bye week and then on November 10th their final game of the season they have another pretty good team in West Texas so they have more games to win, more things to worry about than just tonight. They obviously want to make sure they have a 100% healthy football team for those last three games because if you're Midwestern State, you want to try and win them all so you can get a conference title out of this season before you head on to the Division II playoffs, which I think I don't think anyone will be surprised when the Mustangs end up there. I think everyone has that expectation for this team. Both teams are just finishing up their warm-ups as the second half is ready to begin and as I mentioned before the Havilinas will get the football to begin these final 30 minutes and Coy Detmer who's been playing this game as I said with a, a big brace on his non-throwing arm I'd be curious to see how much time he gets in the second half because obviously if you're the Havilinas hey you have other games in the schedule you want to win and as much as coaches are loath to admit it this early in a game at the third quarter is just beginning the Havilinas kind of need to just put this one in the trash right now and start getting prepared for next week because they have another tough game next week. Who do they play? They play Tarleton in Tarleton. So the Hogs have another tough matchup on the schedule for next week. And they got to make sure everybody's rested and ready and prepared for their first road game in more than a month. They were last on the road against Angelo State on September 15th. They'll be in Tarleton on the 20th. Jason Imbriani to kick away to Jeff Carr and Aaron Jackson. And that will also be throwback Texas A&I night. Hope to see you there for that. Back to see the opening kick or the second half kick is Jeff Carr at 27. Aaron Jackson. Jackson with two kick returns for 35 yards. Tonight. Imbriani kicking it to the left side, and Jackson 
builds it, bobbles it, now runs it out, gets across the five, right hashes to the 15, spins through a tackle across the 20, still going across the 26, but it looked like a disastrous decision. Actually ends up working out okay. Jackson gets to the 26. Yeah, that was the second time. I thought it was going to be the second time tonight. Jackson would have taken a, a kick out of the end zone, and it looked like he was wrapped up at, at around the 22-yard line and looked like, well, it looks like he's not going to get back to the 25, but he was able to keep his feet moving. Detmer brings out the offense with two receivers, Dilworth and Martinez, both tight ends. Thomas and Hertel shift to the left side. Now Martinez, right, that Perkins goes in motion, and another flag is thrown. That was the center judge making the call. I can't imagine this is anything other than, other than a false start. And first and 10 becomes first and 15. Moses Horn is in at center for Joseph Partita. Demmer sends Carr into the flat and throws him a pass. First a turn to catch it. Gets across the 20 and is taken down after a short game, maybe a couple of yards for the junior from Katy, Texas. Heavenly is going from right to left. For those of you listening on KTAI, thank you to those listening as well as those tuning in via Haviland Athletics and YouTube Live to another week of Haviland of football. Detmer under center, sending Perkins in motion. Jet sweep handoff to Perkins. Right side, cutting through a seam, gets tripped up as he crosses the 25, and now another flag comes in, and it hits Paul Manis. And holding on somebody with a number in the 80s. Couldn't hear. Sounded like he said 83. And, it, and Torrey Thomas going off the field. It might have been on him. Second penalty in this series for the Hogs. Second half just underway. The Mustangs leading the Havilliners by a score of 41-0. Nate Cortiso alongside myself, Mark, and Sarah. The fifth of one or seven home games for the Hogs this season. Pass right flat for Carr. Stumbles but turns up field. Gets across the 20 and is waylaid right at about the 21-yard line. Charge led by Troy Burnett. Gain of eight. And Detmer's stat line in this game, not awful. 17 of 23 for 135. That's a pretty good completion percentage. Uh, nearly 74% of his passes. But the Hawks just been unable to take advantage of opportunities. They've been good between the 20s. But other than that, nothing in the red zone. Detmer stepping up, rolling left. Trying to throw middle of the field. Now reloads. Does throw, and it's right into the hands of a Mustang defender. Going left is Jaden Cunnigan. Crossing the 25 and tackled at around the 22. Detmer, I thought he had Tyler Wilson initially, but when he reloaded, that gave Cunningham a chance to cut in front of the receiver for an easy interception. He reloaded, and as he was reloading, he was trying to keep in mind where the line of scrimmage was. He was a little bit weary that he was going to cross it, and... Once he realized that and he wanted to kind of took a look down and made sure where he was, that's when he threw, and it was an easy interception for MSU Texas. Detmer's eighth interception of the season. And Leighton Rab does indeed come back out to lead the offense with 13.02 to go in the third. Three receivers, right side. Now Xavier Land goes in motion. Hand off to Johnson, right through the middle. Touchdown, MSU. Johnson broke through the initial wave of defenders, and there was nobody left after that. And the Mustangs waste no time in adding to their lead. I don't think you can describe that as, you know, anything other than, you know, the Javelina defense just, you know, not being ready. 
in Bryant to try for the PAT. Harrison and Tut were the two linebackers, and they both came up to try and fill gaps, but Johnson found the one that was empty. And Embryana's extra point is good. 12.57 to go in the third quarter. The score is MSU 48, and the Havilene is nothing. And you wonder if that's the last we'll see of Leighton Rab tonight. Obviously, if I'm Phil Maskell, there's no, I mean, I actually, scratch that. Let me start over. There really isn't any reason for MSU to play Rab for the remainder of this game. They should basically just be handing off for the rest of the night. Now, you can't expect a team to just do that for, for 30, or I should say for 27 minutes. But... You know this Hogs defense is just going to be frustrated. And I don't mean to say anyone's going to be playing dirty because I don't think they will, but they're going to be, there's going to be a lot of anger in these hits by Tamuk's defense for the rest of the game. A lot of frustration they're going to be trying to take out over the course of these last 28 minutes or 27, 57 that there is on the clock. You know, I wouldn't want to put my quarterback, my Harlan Hill candidate quarterback, in a position where he has to, in a position where he is in harm's way. I think the danger in that is, if, you know, if you're A&M Kingsville, you're, you know, you're playing frustrated on the defensive end, then you lose track of, you know, time and place and where you are on the field, and it could lead to a touchdown like it did on this first drive for MSU Texas. Kick off by Imbriani, taking it at the goal line is Jeff Carr, running up the middle of the field to the 15, cutting right across the 15, across the 20, and is ridden down at about the 23. And first and ten to Mook right there. We saw in a few of these few situations like this last year, Coach Darren Wilkinson was willing to play his backup quarterback. Now that the person who took on that responsibility changed the start of the season is Cade Dahl. It later became Bo O'Reilly. But Detmer, obviously with all so much time left in the third quarter, I wouldn't expect to see Wilkinson pull his QB just yet. And Detmer is still the quarterback. Single back. Branch Hertel in motion to the left side. Pitch left for Pellerin. Cuts through a gap. Almost ripped up and crosses the 35. Left sideline to the 40. And he's shoved out of bounds with a first down. And another offensive lineman coming in. That's Brandon Smith, the freshman from... Ronald Reagan High School who is entering the game. Smith coming in as an extra tight end off the left side. Detmer in pistol sends Aaron Dilworth in motion. Gives it to Pellerin again. Left side picks his way through a couple of defenders. Gets to the 45. A three yard run for Pellerin. Twelve minutes to play and counting here in quarter number three. Havelina's trailing by a score of forty-eight to nothing here at Havelina Stadium. Detmer hand off to Pellerin through the middle, crosses the fifty, middle of the field to the forty-five, keeps going as he crosses the forty, tripped up by Wilkerson at about the thirty-seven. And Kingsville for the, the first time since the first quarter finding some yardage on offense. Dimmer out of the shotgun from the right hash gives to Pellerin squirts through the middle and is dropped at the 35 two yard run for Pellerin senior from Houston who finished last season fourth in the Lone Star Conference in terms of yards per game. Played in nine games, ran for 731 yards and seven touchdowns.
Hogs trying to avoid their first shutout since 2014 when they were blanked by Eastern New Mexico. Give to Carr right side, finds the room, cuts outside towards the southern yeah, across the 30. Right Shoved it about to the 27. Eight yards. He's pretty close to a first down. The head linesman says keep the chains moving. And MSU right now being willing, being willing to give up yards in pursuit of time. Tyler Wilson near side. Far side is Aaron Dilworth in the receiver spots. Two tight ends, pistol formation, Detmer and Carr. Detmer Jr. to throw, looking left side, pass low, a diving catch by Wilson at the 20 for seven yards. And Tamuk just trying to find a way to get on the scoreboard. As Brandon Smith comes back in the game for the Javelinas. And this is their deepest penetration since that drive in the first quarter that ended at the that MSU 13. The Pistol snap to Detmer. Carr left side cuts back towards the middle of trying to avoid a few defenders. Dives forward near the marker. I think he's going to be a yard short. And the headlinesman immediately signals third down. Kingsville has had a lot of uh, a lot of success on this particular drive running the football. And it should be mentioned that MSU Texas defensively has some starters out but they've also got some starters in there I know number 26 uh, Michael Ross a freshman is getting some action for the Mustangs yeah, out at, at cornerback Khalil Finley and Michael Ross are the corners now give to Carr right side trying to get around the corner now cuts up field he's got a first down as he slithers to the 14 was finally dropped by Alec DiValerio yeah Jaden Cunningham and Demarcus Wilson started this game as the corners but Finley and Ross have taken over those spots now Josh Weidermeyer is still in we have not seen Cervell Ford since that injury he suffered early in the game Marcus Wilkerson has taken over at the other safety spot Detmer on first 10 play fakes rolls right looking for Hertel looking also for Dilworth in the end zone and Detmer to just throw this away and does gets hit low and late and the flag comes in for roughing the passer they're going to get Di Valerio for that for hitting Detmer below the knees Detmer, for his part, who has been banged up this season. He missed the second half last week against Western Oregon. Didn't play, didn't play in the second half against Angelo State. He has taken his fair share of licks. He got up okay from that one. And now has a first and goal for his team at the seven. I believe this is their second trip inside the red zone. It is, yes. This is their first time inside the ten. And now players coming on and off. And Tyler Wilson frustrated as he's coming off the field. And Tamuk has to use a timeout. And the Hadley is certainly not clear there. It appeared on the personnel package that they were going to use on that first and goal play. We were at 8.20 to go in the third quarter. The score is MSU 48, and the Havilene is nothing. The Hogs next week, as I mentioned, will be on the road for the first time in more than a month. They will be visiting Tarleton State in Stephenville. And I will be there to bring all the action to you live as the Hogs take on the Tarleton State Texans, who just knocked off the team that previously had been leading the conference, Texas A&M Commerce. This is the Tarleton State team that came into this week ranked 16. They're going to take a leap after a road victory against the Lions, that same victory that the Javelinas almost had back in week one. I, expect, I would expect Tarleton to move into the top ten. So the Javelinas' job does not get any easier. As good as this Mustang squad is, Tarleton's going to put up just as tough of a challenge for Darren Wilkinson and his team. And the referee left his mic on as he blew the whistle, but here we go. It's second. It's first and goal from the seven. Detmer under center. Four down linemen for the Mustangs. Detmer to throw. Throwing left into the flat for Torrey Thomas. He will score. Makes the catch and crosses the goal line for the touchdown. 
Thomas came inside on the screen, for the t on the tunnel screen. The blocking was there. There was only one corner out there for the offensive line to wipe out. And Thomas was able to trot into the end zone for his second touchdown of the season. Did you say second touchdown of the season? Yes, he had one against Commerce, against Commerce. way back on August 30th. I believe that was the first touchdown of the season for, for the Javelinas. And De La Garza with the PAT. With 8.15 to go, the Havilinas get on the board. The score in the third quarter is the Mustangs 48 and the Havilinas 7. For Detmer, that's touchdown pass number 10 for him. His daddy wore number 10. That's right, he did. And we'll see if Coach Wilkinson opts for an onside kick here. I would not expect it. I think he'll just kick this one deep. It should also be noted that Zach Purcell, MSU's backup quarterback, is warming up on the sidelines, but Leighton Rab is still throwing just the same. So Purcell throwing the ball around might not mean anything. Both quarterbacks might just be staying loose as quarterbacks are well to do almost like pitchers in a bullpen during a game. Purcell has seen action. He came in late during his team's blowout against Humboldt and threw two touchdown passes. So him coming into the game would certainly not be unheard of for Coach Maskell. There's still 8.15 to go in the third quarter. But MSU ha certainly has this game in hand. It would be about the right time to put in the backup quarterback if you are Maskell. But he gets paid to make those decisions, obviously not me. Villagarza to kick it off. This will be the second kickoff of the night for the senior. And Juwan Johnson and Mark Tyreek Edwards back to receive this. I'm really surprised that Maskell is putting Johnson, his best receiver, back to receive this kick. Kickoffs are just, they, everyone seems to know that kickoffs are the place to see injuries on the most. I wouldn't want to put my uh, top flight receiver back to receive this kick. MSU has a bunch of players up near the Ball ready for an onside kick, but Taylor Garza boots it deep. Johnson takes it at the eight on the right side, up up the to the 15 to the 20, up the numbers. Crossing the 25 is hauled down by Jamar Davis at the 29. So a 22-yard return for Johnson, first and 10 for the Mustangs from there. And Leighton Rab is indeed coming back out with the offense. So the first question here for mask for the Mustangs it's okay is are you gonna leave Rab in the answer is yes the second question is okay what kind of plays are you gonna call are you gonna continue to throw the ball or are you gonna throttle it down Donovan Loy the number three running back is in three receivers for MSU Texas Tyreek Edwards goes in motion to the backfield and that we're gonna read option left side with Raph has all has to all tons of room to run Slides down at the 42, a 17, or make that a 14-yard gain for Rab. He didn't have to get touched. And that is not Lloyd. Check that. That is Nicholas Gabriel, who is in the game. They spot Rab at the 40. They always say at the spot where you begin the slide is where you get forward progress to. But regardless, it's 12 yards and a first down. Raph sending Johnson in motion to the backfield. Read option. Option keeper for Raph throwing downfield for Edwards incomplete. A little bit low and through his hands. Second and 10. I know we had seen a Cervell Ford go out for MSU Texas earlier in the first half due to an injury. He just uh, came out to the MSU Texas sideline on crutches. He's in street clothes, uh, and he has, and he's uh, sitting next to the the Gatorade area uh, on the MSU Texas sideline. So, you know, regardless of you know his injury, the result of this game, as, as it stands, is a big reason why he he probably won't see action again tonight. And you certainly would hope that as Rab comes back to pass again, a play fake throws over the middle, caught by Land, who gets leveled by Peyton Hendricks, the first down to the 46 of Tamuk. As the Mustangs move the chances, certainly you hope that 
the result of this game at least will make Cervell Ford feel a little bit better. You don't wish an injury on any player, especially a, a, a guy who's had as good a career as Cervell Ford, a player who's a senior on this team, who probably was enjoying this, this season as much as anybody. You hope that whatever injury he suffered, he's able to recover and get back out on the field. Grab the pass. There's a blitz is coming. Grab over the middle pass. Bobbled incomplete. Trying to hit the tight end. Blaine Albrecht. Albrecht, a senior from Selma, Texas, has just one catch in his Mustang career. Grab tried to hit him up for number two, but just wasn't in the cards. And now it'll be second out of ten. Six, 6.46 to play. Excuse me, in the third quarter. Three receivers to the near side. Rab in the pistol once again. In motion comes Land. Giving off to Gabriel, who's still fighting for yards. A flag gets thrown. There's a man down in the backfield for Tamuk. That's Sean Sims walking away from the spot with the center, A.J. Rowland. And they get Rowland for a personal foul. I'm curious to see what happened. It looked like Rowland was fighting with Sims away from the play. And that was just a flat-out dirty play by A.J. Rowland. As you look at the replay, he did a good job blocking. He threw Sims to the ground, but Sims was five yards behind the play, and Rowland just dove on him as the play was ending. I don't understand why a player would do this, especially up 48 to nothing. Hey, you're going to win. I don't. But Rowland obviously felt the need to send a little bit more of a message and good awareness by the referee to throw the flag. It'll be second and 17. Rab to throw. Looking down the middle. Wide open is Juwan Johnson. Caught the 25. Running away to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown MSU. A 61-yard hookup. The fifth touchdown pass of the night for Leighton Rab. The fourth touchdown catch for Juwan Johnson. He goes. He has eight grams for 189 yards and four touchdowns tonight. And that should be the cherry on the Sunday for Midwestern State. And it's just a point sails through the head and linesman throws a flag. I think he's going to get to move for offsides. But that would be a pretty meaningless foul. And the extra point is good. 6.15 to go in quarter number three. The Mustangs lead the Havilians 55 to 7. This is the highest point total given up by the Javelinas since 2014 when they lost to Eastern New Mexico 61-7 to in Portales. That was a season during which the Haas gave up 55 to Commerce, 80 to Tarleton, 57 to Angelo, 48 to Midwestern, and 61 to Eastern New Mexico. So Leighton Rab with a stat line that just keeps getting better. 17 to 32, 308, five touchdowns. Jawan Johnson, eight grabs, 189 yards, and four scores to his credit. I think the the message that MSU Texas wanted to send to the Javelinas, the Lions, Tarleton State, the rest of the country, I think it's been received tonight. 6.15 to go. They lead this one by 48. Embriani kicks it deep through the end zone. Touchback. Ball to Tamuk. To 
And again, remember the thing about Rab started this game one of seven for 12 yards. Since then, he has completed 16 of 25 for 296 yards and four touchdowns. Efficiency rating of 185.5, which actually seems kind of low. Detmer takes the shotgun snap, hands up to Pellerin, left side, tries to get around the edge. A flag gets thrown as Pellerin's run out of bounds for run out of bounds for no gain. And that's going to be on Justin Johnson. Tamuk has run 47 plays for 258 yards. That's an average of nearly five and a half yards per play. They've also run for over 100 yards. That's the sort of amazing part. Tamuk has actually outgained Midwestern State on the ground, but MSU is averaging nearly nine yards per tote. Then we're back to pass. Deep ball over the middle, caught by Torrey Thomas up around the 33-yard line. He'll be just short of a first down. Thomas collided with Khalil Finley, and Finley was holding his head, and now he's on the on the turf at Pepsi Field. Thomas had three catches, 47 yards, in Tamuk's first game against Commerce. That was his fifth reception of the night. And he's got 40 yards receiving, including Tamuk's only touchdown, and Khalil Finley is coming off the field, so MSU will delve a little deeper into their depth chart. Five thirty-five to go. We are in the third quarter. That's the risky run when you when you keep first teamers in in a game where you're up by 48 points in the second half. You know, you lose an important piece like Finley. You hope he's all right. Detmer to throw, looking left side. Throws up a jump ball near side for Dilworth under thrown. Third down and one now coming up for the Javelinas. They bring back in Tyler Wilson. And Torrey Thomas slot on the near side. Jacob Armstrong slot right. Wilson and Dilworth are the wide men as Detmer passing the flat for Thomas. Makes the catch. Is stood up around the line of scrimmage, tries to reach the ball forward and just gets to that imaginary yellow line to move the chains for the Javelinas. A bittersweet evening for Torrey Thomas. That's his sixth catch. So to move now with a, a first and 10. Detmer still 21 to 29 for 177 on that one touchdown. Does also have an interception. And up to Perkins on the jet sweep. Trips and falls in the backfield, but he had nowhere to go. Dwayne Tate sniffed that play out in a hurry. And to move with a loss of yardage. Perkins might have had the edge on Tate. But in the process of trying to make a move on him, just lost his footing and lost four yards as well. And good news for the Mustangs, Khalil Finley is back in the game. Full house backfield, now Brent Hertel motions out, slot left side. 
Ball on the right hand. Stetmer drops back to throw. Looking left for Thomas, who was dropped immediately as Tate was there again. And Tate, who is Paul Manis' backup as the rover on this defense, making the most of his opportunities, at least on this series. Detmer, the offense, looking to convert a third down and 14. And that was Hertel's man on that last play, but Twait Tate, give him credit, it's a little bit too quick for Brent Hertel as Coy Detmer Jr. calls for a timeout with 3.14 to go in the quarter. Taking another look around the Lone Star Conference, UT Permian Basin picking up the victory over Humboldt State by a score of 36 to 14. West Texas, as Nate mentioned on halftime, knocking off Angelo State on the road 26 to 18. So West Texas with an opportunity to jump up in the national rankings. And Tarleton, as we said before, with a big time victory at Commerce, 47 to 21. A huge statement victory for the Texans and that is the team that the Havilians will be visiting next week that game was a three point game in the third quarter and the Texans scored the last 24 points including two touchdowns in a span of a minute and four seconds in the fourth quarter to stretch who was a six-point lead into an insurmountable 19-point advantage and one late tack-on score added to Tarleton's route in Commerce. That's second loss of the season for the Lions. They can ill afford another. Shotgun for Detmer, actually pistol on third and 14, drops back. Steps up, under pressure, going to run, and slides down to 38. No reason to take any unnecessary hits. Fourth down. This is the first time we've seen Detmer tuck it in run tonight. Not much choice on that play. The pocket really collapsed. And Detmer just trying to do what he can to pick up some yardage on third down and long. And sure enough, a new punt returner goes back for MSU, that's Bryce Martinez. First time I believe he's seen the field tonight. And now I would expect to see Purcell, the backup quarterback. A high punt, fair catch called for and made by Martinez as he backpedals. And no, you are going to continue to see Leighton Rab. And credit to Rab, he's a competitor. Any competitor like him is going to want to keep playing. You don't want to come off the field, but at some point in time, if you're Bill Maskell, A, you might want to call off the dogs, and B, why would you want to expose your quarterback to the possibility of getting hit? Call off the horses, too. Justin Jones is the man in the backfield with Rab, who opens with three receivers left, and one of them is Jawan Johnson. He's 11 yards shy of 200 tonight. Three men left side include Xavier Land and Quentin Childs. Hand off and smothered in the backfield by Brandon Jones. Is Justin Jones. Second down and long. 2.16 to go. We're in the third quarter. 55-7 the lead for MSU Texas. And the Mustangs, just as you would expect, taking their time on offense. Rab comes out once again in the pistol formation. Shotgun snap for the senior, back to throw. Looking, 
down the middle, pass caught by Childs across the 30 to the 33. For Childs, that's his third catch of the night. As the clock moves towards a minute to play here in the third quarter. Blitz being shown by the Havelinas. Hand off to Jones, right side through the line to get to the 39, to about the 40. Some extra pushing and shoving between Quinton Childs and Jordan Seminot. And that's a first down. Looks like the MSU Texas trainers having a look at DeAndre Despani, the starting right guard, number 64, on the Mustang sideline. He appears to be experiencing some discomfort with his right arm. First down, number 19 of the night for the Mustangs. Rav in the shotgun. And keeps it running left on an option. Pitches left for Childs. Jordan Semina trying to haul him down. Finally does at the 49. That looks like it'll be another first down. And indeed it is on what should be the final play of the third quarter. And that indeed will be the final play of the third quarter. Teams will switch sides. We won't have far to go. They'll go from 149 to the other. And in the meantime, we'll take a 30-second break. This is the Havelina Sports Network and KTAI 91-1. The score, the Mustangs 55, the Havelina 7. We'll be right back with the fourth quarter in 30 seconds. Fourth quarter of play, just beginning here at Havelina Stadium. And the Midwestern State Mustangs leading by a score of 55 to 7. 15 minutes and the Hawks can move on to Tarleton State, who they'll be visiting next week. Brad with a read option, with an option keeper pitching right for Childs, who gets to the 46 four-yard run. We're going to make a little bit of noise for the Havelina Battalion Army ROTC. Now the football the team, not the only Havelina squad in action tonight. To move. The volleyball team is on the road in Deming, New Mexico, taking on Western New Mexico. And a match that's gone the full five sets. As Rabin the pistol takes a snap, drops back to pass. Throwing near side for Childs, who makes the catch at the 29. And that match nearing its conclusion. West New Mexico up third, or I should say both teams tied at 13 in the fifth set. Matty Bravin with 28 kills and 25 assists tonight. Go ahead, Nate. After that catch, Childs uh, came up limping to the MSU Texas sideline. He's now out of the game. Grab pistol, three receivers right. Jones behind him as the halfback. Land comes in motion. Pass right flat for land. 
Heading right towards the sideline is run into by Aaron Jackson and then a bunch of blue jerseys arrive to help bring him down. Second down. And a player injured on the far side, that is a Havelina. Thirteen twenty-three to play in the fourth quarter. The score, Midwestern State 55, the Havelina 7. And it is all over in Deming, New Mexico. The Havelina volleyball team pulls it out in five sets, winning 25-22, 25-27, 25-15, 23, 25-15-13. Maddie Brabham finishes with 30 kills in this match. An incredible, an incredible performance by a senior having a remarkable season. So the Havelina volleyball team delivers some good news on this Saturday night. Grab a read option, hand off to Jones through the middle, gets leveled by Peyton Hendricks after about a three yard run. And it will be third down and seven. Have these jump off sides. Rab with a free play. Throws it up right side. In the end zone for Johnson. It's knocked away. But the offsides call will at least give the Mustangs another opportunity on a third down and two. That's on Daryl French. I'm really not sure why the Mustangs are still throwing the ball. Like it's the fourth quarter, you're up by 48 points. You have this game in hand. The classy thing to do would just be to, to run the ball. And if, hey, if you run the ball and, you, and they don't stop you, well then you really have nothing, I mean, there's nothing else you can do. You, you can't you, take a knee. Yeah, you can't take a knee with 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, but you can run the football. Grab. Read option, keeper, running left side, through the middle of the 10, cuts left to the 5, Leighton Rab in for the touchdown. Leighton Rab, touchdown, Mustang. His third rushing touchdown of the season. And MSU into the 60-point range here late in the fourth quarter. And Embryana lining up for the extra point. Embryana's PAT is up and good. 12 12 to go in the fourth quarter. MSU Texas now leading 62 to 7. Most points allowed by a Havlina team since they gave up 80 to Tarleton on November 11th of 2014. And it's, it's hard, even with 62 points, I can't really criticize MSU's play call. And they've thrown the ball a couple of times, but again, you can't, like you said, you can't just take a knee every play. I don't really have a problem with them, with their play calling. I'm just really surprised they're keeping in Leighton Rab. I'm not sure what, what purpose it serves, unless you're just trying to p allow him to pad his stats, because you're going, he's trying to win the Harlan Hill Award. But just really strange decision making by Bill Maskell here in the fourth quarter of a game that has been really decided since we hit halftime. Embryonic to kick it away. Yeah. 
go early in the fourth quarter. Pooch kick to the near side to Jacob Clarkson, who makes the catch. Right side line across the 30 is running out of bounds at about the 32. And that's another strange choice. Why would you? Why are you pooch kicking it in the fourth quarter? It's almost like you're trying to get another free possession. And Glenn Schultz, our PA announcer to our right, taking the cue, announcing the final score in Deming. As Havilena Volleyball battles their way to another victory. They'll be at home on Friday when they play Commerce. It'll be Dig Pink Night for Havilena Volleyball. As Court Emory Jr. drops back to first steps up in the pocket Ooh. under pressure. Gets leveled as he throws an incompletion to Torrey Thomas. He took two licks. And there are two players down now in the backfield. One of them for MSU Texas. That's DJ Doggett. And that was no easy hit for Detmer. I don't think you could call it a cheap shot either. And Detmer is up on his feet. And he certainly looks... Like he might be a little wobbly. He's going to obviously have to come off for at least one play. But after a hit like that, if I'm Darren Wilkinson, I would not feel comfortable putting my starting quarterback back in the game for the rest of the night because you know you're going to have to, you know, you know you're just going to be throwing for the most part. Charlton's going to be able to, or I should say, MSU's going to be able to pin their ears back and come after your passer. I wouldn't want to put Detmer Jr. back in harm's way. Yeah, just leave Rosalini in there. I mean, Rosalini's a guy who's had to play last week in some critical situations, some experience for the, the sophomore from Cypress, Texas, certainly couldn't hurt. Russ Lear to throw, passing left side and one hops the intended receiver, Tyler Wilson. And Detmer looks like he's still gonna be held out of the action on this third down and 10. And Glenn Schultz, I'm sure, getting a note from our student intern, Ryan Smith, regarding the night that Madison Brabham had in Deming. Tamuka pulled out their second nail-biter of the season over the Mustangs. Quick pass left side for Hertel. Caught short of a first down. And Tamuka will send out the punt team, I'd imagine, and here they come. Billy Garza nearly has the punt blocked, but it falls down to Edwards to the 20 on the right side. Across the 25 and is wrestled down to the 28. And finally, the backup quarterback makes an appearance for the Mustangs as Zach Purcell will trot onto the field at the 11.02 mark. Purcell, a sophomore from Kingwood, Texas. You know where that, you know where that is? I do not. Are you going to tell me? Yes, sir. That is uh, North Houston. Purcell, 14 to 20 on the season for 121 yards and two touchdowns. All, almost all of those stats came in his team's first game of the season against Humboldt State when he threw both of those TD passes. And. 62 to 7 is our score. The Mustangs lead at the 11.02 mark. What I'll be curious to see is what Adam Austin will call for Zach Purcell. You know, they've been very aggressive as we've seen uh, with Leighton Rabb through about three and a, a fourth of the fourth quarter. Now, you know, Purcell has the ability to put up some yardage and will they go conservative and, and try and melt that clock or 
Will they try and, and keep the motor running of this Mustang offense? Nicholas Gabriel back in at running back. One of the weirdest things about that was obviously MSU knows what the score is. They didn't play Johnson or Seals. Either one of their top two running backs. They were willing to play Jones and Johnson. As Purcell with a read option, keeper options left for Martinez, who is slung down in the backfield by Aaron Jackson. So obviously they know what the score is. They don't want to get their number one running back sir, but they're willing to play their best receivers and their all-world quarterback. This seemed like a really strange decision, especially if you're going to call run plays for him, where he's going to be open for open to take hits. And flags fly before the snap, and Purcell forced to just kill the play. And they get Vaughn Taylor for offside. That'll make it second down and seven. You know, looking back on this four game homestand. went out of conference for two games and you weren't able well you were able to win the New Mexico Highlands game and drop one to Western Oregon but now you're facing this top 15 team and then you've got another top 20 team next week Purcell read option keeper runs right side open room across the 40 45 to the 50 right side to the 40 being chased by Peyton Hendricks to the 20 right sideline inside the 10 And it's running to bounds as a flag though back near the line of scrimmage. And that illegal formation penalty. Phil Maskell out to discuss it with the referee. I think if that play stood, you know, I wouldn't have had a problem with that particular play calling because that was just Purcell. No, it's just a it's a read option. Yeah. I, I mean if you're talking about, and this is the, the fine line that I think that Maskell and his staff are walking by, as I mentioned before, continuing to play uh, late in Rab, you can look at it and say, oh, are they trying to run up the score? Is there, are they being unsportsmanlike? But when you call a read option or you're calling option plays, like when you're the one, when you keep the quarterback in, but you're calling options, you're exposing the hits, well, you're the one who's taking, you're taking a risk. You're just asking the defense to stop you. I mean, it's no different, in my opinion, than a triple option team running that. Like, what do you what do you expect them to run kind of a thing? So I don't think there's anything that Maskell's doing that I would qualify as, as being, you know, unsportsmanlike or would seem to have them running up the score. They, they haven't been, they've been running the ball most of the time. They've thrown a few passes, but every team's going to do that with this much time left on the clock because obviously you're still trying to move the football. But it's up to the Tamuk to defense to stop them. At some point in time, you can't, like you said, you can't just take a knee for the entire quarter. Purcell, and we get more flags on the far side, a false start. Yeah, Kylan Harrison, he was in motion and he kept running. He didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't uh, stay in place. Purcell on second and 17 with one running back in the backfield, three receivers right side. Back to pass now, rolling right. Thinking about running, just a quick pass in the flat off the fingertips of Kylan Harrison, incomplete. Now, no way to go. We are in the fourth quarter. MSU Texas with a 62 to 7 lead. Tamuk, as we said, next week will be on the road. They will play Tarleton State in Stephenville at 6 p.m. And one more pre-snap whistle, a timeout for MSU Texas before this third down and 17 play.
And they, we said at halftime this half would be kind of a bittersweet, invaluable, but invaluable opportunity for Coach Darren Wilkinson and his coaching staff to evaluate these players and see how many of them would keep playing, how they would respond to being in a involved in a game that was so lopsided. The team has just kind of gotten away from his team. Do you feel like this team has continued to play throughout the second half of this game? You know, I, you know, with nine minutes to go, I, you want to see how well the players are playing, who's still playing, and who might take a playoff or, or two. But you know, you know, at the end, you you got to watch film on every single one of these players as a as a whole. And that. Third and seventeenth, Purcell with a handoff. Up the middle goes Johnson across the 30. He's close to a first down. They're going to spot him just a couple of yards short. And the show is longest run of the year for Nicholas Gabriel. My mistake. But MSU will send on the punt team. That's been a rare sight tonight. Coach Maskell has not needed much out of Dylan Spears this evening. This will be the third punt of the night for MSU Texas. And Sean Landes back to receive. High kick Landes waves for a fair catch quickly and makes it at the 33 yard line. It's a 31 yard punt. So earlier this week, uh, Sean Landes on Twitter tweeted just, just how busy his weekly schedule is. On October the, the 10th, he said he has seven classes, football, a job, and he's the president and vice president of two different student organizations at Tamuk. Hashtag God strength, hashtag I don't get tired. So he's certainly not tired now here in Lendez, the fourth quarter. Len is a senior from Mission, Texas, as right to pass goes Casey Rosalie on first and over the middle. Caught by Hertel, shakes off one tackle, going right side for a first down. And you can certainly say that Brent Hertel has not quit in the fourth quarter of this game as he picks up a 13-yard gain to move the chains. No, Hertel's coming out of the game now, but, you know, the kind of offensive provider that Roe Posada was for this team. You know, Hertel's done a very, very good job tonight in his stead. Hertel and Torrey Thomas are both going to pick up the slack without Posada as Jeff Carr gets a carry off the left side and he gets run down the back. Of That'll be a two-yard loss. Firstly, under center and an offset eye. Dropping back to three. Here comes a pass rush. Pass deep for Torrey Thomas. Incomplete. Good defense by Finley as he cut in front of Thomas at the last minute to disrupt that pass. Third down and 12. Rosalini went 7 of 14 last week for 63 yards. No touchdowns, one interception against Western Oregon. Was the, the men under center at the end of that game when the Hogs had a chance to win. They had a first down in the red zone, down by six. Just couldn't find a way to get the ball into the end zone. Third and 12, steps up in the pocket. Rolling left is Rosalini. Going to pull it down. Now he's going to throw it deep into coverage. And that's Finley. intercepted by Khalil Finley. Finley. 
Hard to blame Rosalini for trying to take a chance right there with the score 62 to 7. It's kind of why not. But there really was just no nowhere for that football to go other than right into Finley's arms. After that First brief ten, sorry, go ahead, Nate. After that brief disappointment Finley had not picking off Rosalini on the previous play. The next play met with redemption with that INT. And again, credit to the Mustangs. They have they have beaten the Havilians in every phase of the game tonight. There are no two ways about that. Purcell in the pistol on first and ten. 6.41 to go. MSU leading 62-7. to Hosh is four down linemen. Running right on the read option. Keeper is Purcell, and he stumbles down right at the line of scrimmage. Purcell with an option. Keeper runs left and runs right to the arms of Jacob Clarkson for no gain. And a third down coming up for the Mustangs. Jordan Carroll and Kylan Harrison are the receivers in along with Bryce Martinez who's a slot man on the right side. Clock running here in the fourth quarter. Purcell to throw. There's enough deep for Martinez caught across midfield. Cason Franklin with the tackle. And the Mustangs move the chains. You know, back in our pregame show, we had talked about how big it would be for the Javelinas to get pressure on on Leighton Rab or any quarterback that MSU Texas would throw out there. And, you know, Purcell had all kinds of time to throw there. Pistol. Keeping the ball is Purcell fumbles. Brendan Jones picks it up and it will race in for a Havelina touchdown. So Brandon Jones, the senior defensive end from Houston, with a little something to celebrate. Made that play all by himself. Forced the fumble, picked it up, and raced away for the score. So I wonder if with a defensive with the touchdown this evening. You think they'll credit him with the sack there too, maybe? I don't think they'd give him a sack. That looked like just a straight run play. But he'll get the tackle for a loss, the forced fumble, the fumble recovery. He'll get the hat trick in that respect. And the touchdown is a cherry on the Sunday. So a little bit of a bright spot for the Hodges. Julio De La Garza's extra point is good with 4.36 to go. And the Javelinas score for the second time tonight. And the score is 62-14. to 14 in favor of the Mustang. And the Hawks have had a play land in the NCAA division, in the NCAA's top five in division two in each of the last two weeks. Jeff Carr's touchdown run a couple weeks ago. Jordan Seminoff's pick six last week. I think Brandon Jones just came up with another candidate for that. You can jump into the backfield, force a fumble all by yourself, and then pick it up and run it back for a score. I think you deserve a little bit of consideration for one of the top plays of the week. That was a great all around effort by Brandon Jones. We talked about effort. You want to continue to see effort from this team? I think it's been fair to say the Hawks have not given up in this game. They're still playing hard. Specifically Brandon Jones after last week's performance against Western Oregon. 
Just over four and a half minutes to go. As the Hawks tack on their second touchdown, that's their fourth non-offensive touchdown of the season. They had the pick six by Dynamite Jones Fagata against Wesley and the blocked punt for a touchdown against Angelo. They had the pick six last week by Jordan Seminot and now a scoop and score courtesy of Brandon Jones. Runs came into the office the other day as Dylan guards with an onside kick that bounces high and running away on the right side is Xavier Land down the right sideline. He will charge in for a touchdown. And the Mustangs certainly having some fun tonight at the expense of a very frustrated Havelina team. Imbriani for the PAT. Low snap, the holder. Gets it down, Imbriani knocks it through. 4.29 to go. The score is the Mustangs 69 and the Javelinas 14. And Midwestern State has proven themselves every bit the number 12 team in the nation this evening, Nate. They've scored in all three phases. Well, they've scored now on on special teams for the for the second time tonight. They had that first touchdown on the uh, the botched uh, field goal attempt uh, in the first quarter for for Tamuk, and and now with this onside kick recovery for six more. And so, you know, they are going to be a formidable team going forward. And and I think their performance tonight was to be the, the message to the rest of the Lone Star Conference and the rest of the country that they're not going anywhere anytime soon. And I think any frustration that might have lingered from Commerce's loss last week again, from Midwestern's loss last week against Commerce, excuse me, has to be long gone. This, I would expect, would be a very cathartic evening for Bill Maskell and his team against a, a conference rival. Havelinas are going to fall to 2-5. and five. They're going to be 0-4 in the Lone Star Conference going into another bear of a matchup against Carlton in a week. Pooch kick. Center of the field coming up and taking it as Aaron Jackson with the 20. Middle of the field trying to pick his way through the line. Now cuts left side 35. And is run down from behind by Weidermeyer at the 39. So Casey Rosalini will lead the offense out one last time with 4.21 to go in the fourth quarter. Rosalini still looking for his first collegiate touchdown pass. He has Ryan Martinez, Tyler Wilson. On the near side, Rosalini under pressure, throws deep down the middle, intercepted. Running it back on the right side of the 50, 45 to the 40. And leaping out of bounds with the interception is Chris Hawkins. There's a flag. They're on the 40-yard line. Be curious to see if that is on the return or maybe before the pass was thrown. MSU will begin this possession at their own 48-yard line. And a lot of the starters still in for Tim. Brandon Jones is in. So is Jordan Seminot. 
Devontae Williams is in the game for the Javelinas. And Vaughn Taylor as well. Purcell fumbles the ball. It's loose. I think MSU got it back. And that is indeed the case. Johnny on the spot with the recovery was Austin Davis. Jalen Harrison is in the game as well. Now Leandre Dever comes in to replace Devontae Williams. Purcell with a handoff into the middle. And dropped after a short gain is Gabriel. 321 to play in the fourth quarter. 69 to 14, the lead for MSU Texas. And what has been an all-around dominant performance by the nation's number 12 team. And count on them taking a nice jump on the standings. You'd expect them to at least leap above commerce. Purcell on, third and nine. Man in motion, that is Harrison. Just saw the throw. Left flat for Harrison to Mook's pursuit arriving and knocks him out of bounds short of the marker. Clock will keep running with under 240 to play. Landez back to receive another punt from Spears. Tamuk showing a rush, but only a couple of good players come. And Spears blasts it over Landez's head, but it bounces short inside the five and is down inside the five. Good coverage as J.R. Cognacy was there to keep the ball from going into the end zone. with Jeff Carr, the deep man. No Josh Oglesby in this game, which is surprising to me. Personally will throw, looking left, pass caught, and crossing the 10, fighting his way to the 14 is Tyler Wilson. Or make that Tory Thomas. Thomas will end this game as one of the bright spots for the Javelinas. And Tamuka, no hurry right now with under two minutes to go. For Thomas, that's catch number seven tonight. He has Tamuk's only offensive touchdown. Rosalini, left side for Thomas, almost picked off. It was incomplete. And Rokeem Paul also in at receiver for the Javelinas at the moment. Second and 10, 81 seconds to play. In this one, Rosalina gives it to Carr through the middle, gets hit hard in the hole. Tackled after a short game by Jalen Abdul Kareem. MSU Texas will go to six and one. Their record in conference 
will stay at four and one. They'll be behind only Tarleton State, who they'll play in two weeks after a Saturday off. First and he gives it to Carr, hit in the backfield and tackled. And that I would expect to be the final play of this game. And sure, sure enough, that will be the case. Coach Wilkinson is off with the headset. And as to move, we'll just watch the final seconds of this one tick away. Both teams lining up at midfield to shake hands. And the final seconds ticking away. And the final score in this one, the Mustangs 69, the Javelinas 14. Nate and I will take a quick break. We'll be back in 60 seconds. We'll give you the final totals. We'll wrap this thing up and get you all set for Tamuk's next game in Stephenville next week. This is the Javelina Sports Network and KTAI back in 60 seconds. The Havelina fight song being played as is to tradition after every Tamuk home game. Havelina is unfortunately with a night that, to say the least, did not go as they hoped. A 69 to 14 loss to the MSU Texas Mustangs here at Havelina Stadium tonight. Mark and Sarah alongside Nate Cortiso to close this one out. And Nate, just quite to put this one kind of short and sweet. The Mustangs just proved to be the better team tonight in all three phases, and there were there was no there were no two ways about that. They they clearly have earned their ranking as the number 12 team in the nation, no doubt about that. And they didn't want people to forget that they were fourth ranked in all of Division II football, and you know they earned that ranking up to last week before they lost to the Lions. They sent the message tonight that not only are they one of the best teams and college football they are one of the few teams that can win a national championship yeah you can tell they came out here with a purpose they really wanted to get the bad taste that last week left in their mouth gone and they and Leighton Rab really was the star of the show for this team Rab after a slow start where he missed a few open receivers was just on target for seemingly the rest of the night 20 of 35 338, five touchdowns, and Jawan Johnson really was the man who was his go-to guy. Nine receptions, 202 yards. He caught four of those touchdown passes tonight. This MSU passing game really came alive. Had a great night against a Tamuk pass defense that prior to this had looked like and had earned a statistical ranking as one of the best in the country. They did so, and when 